All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to Lawful Stupid RPG. I am your dungeon master for the evening. My name is Harry, and here you join us in the twilight hours of the Pantheon campaign. As today is our final session, as our players will quite literally be battling for the fate of the world. And who says that our campaigns are too grandiose? Um, but yeah, here we find ourselves above Olympus. But before we get any further into the campaign, just a quick announcement that Party Foul, hosted by the wonderful DM Zach, is tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern, um, which is, I think, 12 p.m. Uh, British Standard Time. So do make sure to tune in for that. And of course, if you're new to the channel and this is the first time watching a lawful stupid RPG um, campaign, do make sure to follow us on the Discord, on um, the Twitter, um, MySpace, and whatever else there is. Um, I, I don't really follow that stuff that too well. Instagram, that's one of the things people use. Um, follow us on Instagram. Um, but always the most important thing is to follow us on the Discord, where we're always running one-shots and uh, doing fun sort of sessions and games, and you always have the opportunity to become a part of a stream campaign yourself. So that could be really fun. So look forward to seeing you there. But without further ado, um, from last session, what happened was the party fought their way through the um, Feast of Dionysus, taking place in the co-opted temple of Artemis, all the way up to the um, peak of Olympus, where they found the meeting room of the Olympians, the Grand Temple of Zeus atop the peak of Olympus, where uh, they were welcomed to the um, quite horrific side of Ares in the process of butchering some of his former compatriots, the Olympian gods. There they saw the corpses of not only Athena, but of Hermes as well. Um, after a pretty gruesome fight, which included many berserkers and many fire elementals, uh, the party did manage to slay Ares. Um, not before he told them, um, well, he didn't manage to tell them anything. He was uh, finished off too quickly. But Athena, being resurrected, <laughs> thankfully, by Antigonus, managed to tell the party that Zeus was not present on Mount Olympus. He was preparing his final gambit, his end game, his true, true final power, his, um, his go-to card. He's gone to Mount Etna in what we currently call Sicily. And there is only one thing Mount Etna is known for. It is the tomb of Titan, the one one mon monster in all of Greek mythology that managed to give Zeus a pretty hardy run for his money. Uh, and it's Typhon who Zeus has gone to see for some reason, but who knows why? Athena has told you this, uh, and that's where we'll rejoin the session. I think you guys are on the map of Throne World 20 where you were last time. Um, so yeah, Athena, given some new life by her uh, divine ambrosia that you've gifted her with, she will look to each one of you and say... If there is any final preparations you need to make, you must make them now. If we get closer to Zeus, I am still not sure what he's capable of. There may not be another time to rest. If you would, your name, Antigonus, correct? Yes. Would you perhaps attempt what you have cast on me, on my brother Hermes here? I need a diamond. Do you have any diamonds around? Oh, well, that shouldn't be too difficult. And she'll um, disappear for a few minutes, giving the party, you know, a final moment of recompense, final moment of quiet solitude amongst yourselves um, before the final, the final battle begins. <sighs> I thought to trust Athena, but I did not know to trust the others. What do we think of Hermes? He is the god of thieves, but that is not all that he is the god of. He's also the god of medicine and travelers. <clears throat> medicine could be pretty useful. Hmm. We are travelers. And someone might be a thief. If you put trust in Athena, I think you should put trust in who she puts in trust after that. Oh yes, I, I agree. We, we need as much help as we can get. Mm. I agree too. I think at this point it is wiser not to scorn allies. Okay, Kara. Would, this, would you have it this way too? Yes, I think so. Fine. I will uh, revive them. I just wish we could get some rest before we, before we face Zeus, but unfortunately it seems that the longer we take, the more of a chance of him unleashing Typhon. I don't know what to do at that point. 
yeah, not too long before Athena returns from wherever she went. But when she came, she did bring a diamond with her, in fact, a handful of them, at which point she just scatters them across the Olympian's table, like rolling a handful of dice. And she just looks to you, Antigonus, saying, pick your one. No, roll your initiative. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone sits around the Olympian's table. (laughs) Okay, no, um, she'll just say, pick any, take all of them. God, no, the gods only know that... I am a god, so why would they say such a thing? I only know that the <laughs> mere stones will be useless if Zeus's plans come to pass. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll pick up the one worth a thousand gold pieces or more, a chunk of them, and I will breathe into them, and my breath will turn into flame, and then I'll sort of like float them towards Hermes, and they'll absorb into his body, and like fire erupts around him, and like his wounds are healed by clay being absorbed in everything as I cast Ray's Dead. All right, sure. Uh, As you're doing this, Athena sort of leans over you closely, sort of invasively, trying to spectate the magic you're casting somehow, um, something she can't cast herself. And she'll just say to you as you're casting it, quite um, almost in a way that's making you lose focus or so, she'll start um, sort of pontificating on the ideas that gods can't cast magic on other gods or they can't undo magic done by other gods. A strange rule that's set in on Olympus. Um, so as you do this, she just sort of looks at you as uh, Hermes finally uh, blinks his yellow eyes open, bright yellow, and his head, the hair on his head sort of takes on a fiery sort of waviness, even though, although he's almost as though he's underwater. But um, here you are in the still air atop Olympus as he just looks up at you and says, Whoo! Oh, 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 wow! Oh, uh, oh, God. Ah, the throat. Yeah. Um, uh, last thing I remember is Ari's choking me to death, and he, you're Antigonus, right? I've followed you quite closely, actually. You're, I, you're I, the uh, the Prometheus guy, huh? I, yeah, well, well I, I quite enjoy your mail system. Oh, yeah? That was my idea, that really good. I thought to myself, why can't humans fly to where they need to go and drop the messages? And then I remembered humans can't fly. Strange. Right. Or mortals, I, I should come say. come up with a, a catchy name for it, like a... You know, Hermes Postals, like HPS or something. HPS? Yeah, Hermes Postal Service. Oh, <laughs> like the first letter of each word. That's that's inspired. Yeah, HPS. Well, I mean, I will do if the world doesn't go up in flames. But, you know, good idea, Antigonus, and I want you behind it if you survive. Which, all things considered, you're probably not going to. So, you know, let's talk about this when you're alive and back. And not now when you're about to die. Huh? Hermes, we just killed the god of war and brought you back to life. I think a little faith might be quite nice. Oh, sorry. Yeah, of course. I've got total faith in you guys. You especially, Yarling. Even your uh, mastery in arts over seduction and dancing has become fable even here to the gods. I've heard Hera has been quite jealous of it. Uh, mainly because of the way Zeus was after you, of course. <laughs> you know what happens to the the people that Zeus chases, of course. Well, it happened to you, so why why, why would I go into more of that? Anyway, um, why have you brought me back from death? I was quite enjoying, actually, what that was like. As you can imagine, never experienced that before. That's the reason they call us immortals, after all. Oh, um, yes, Athena seems to say that you could help us find Zeus quickly. We need to get to him, and uh, we also need to rest if we can and try to stop the world from ending. You know, just another... Tuesday, or whatever we call it in Rome and Greece. Yeah, never Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday. That's a good one, too. Maybe I'll keep that in mind. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can help you get to uh, where Zeus is. Uh, where is Zeus before I promise too much? Mount Edna. Oh, right. <laughs> There's not really much ma- at Mount Edna. Pretty nasty, spiky place. Uh, I don't know why, but you want to go to Mount Etna to meet Zeus? That's sure, that's fine by me. He's in a bad mood, I've got to warn you, but so be careful with what you say. Um, and We're you quite say, aware. Yeah, yeah, of course you are. Sorry, what am I saying? Um, Athena, well, well, what do you want me to do? Help them? And Athena will um, sort of give Hermes time to get all this out of his system, um, and she'll Coat look across. And, yeah, be yeah. excitable. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little puppy you got to calm him down a little bit he's the, he's the sort of you know he's the bright light of olympus you know he's the on youngest their, of the olympians so when they're chatting i whatever like 
diamonds are left, I scoop into my component pack. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah, you can scoop in the diamonds, no problem. Athena will watch you but not stop you. Uh, she'll cast her gaze back to Hermes and say, Hermes, do you have any of those, oh, that fruit that um, you, we did the thing the once with Troy, you remember the fruits? Uh, and Hermes says, yeah, yeah, apples. Yeah, I got apples. Um, the ones that, yeah, and and he'll uh, pull out a collection of, we'll say, how many party members are there? Six apples. And I'm not going to try and beat around the bush here. Eating an apple will give you the benefits of a long rest because I want you guys to have a long rest. So, <laughs> hooray. <clears throat> Wow. I try and beat around the bush. So I've got a couple things to do before <laughs> I eat the apple then. Sure uh, so first I will cast, I'll use my 7th and my 8th level spell. Uh, seventh slide, I'll use Hero's Feast to make a, like a big meal in addition to our apple to all eat. And I'll roll that in a second. And sure. then I'm also going to go off and start scribing my planner ally. And I'll let you know about that after the next all right okay sure thing and right. i will cast plenty of abjuration spells to recharge my uh, shield sure all right you can just cast as many as you want to get it back up to its maximum of 35 yeah i mean i could just it might be more now i, mean, I could just keep casting alarm as a ritual <laughs> that's just yeah. stupid well you know what, well, whatever yeah. works the most the least intrusive spell. yeah you keep casting alarm you keep triggering off to everybody's annoyance with you <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a conversation here, Herodotus. Or Merlin, I should say now. Merlin. 37 uh, hit points, my my ward is now. 37 hit points, good to know. Do you want to roll that, um, um, the, the Hero's Feast, please? Uh, four. It was not very good. But the other so... one, it stacks. It does stack, evidently. I was just reading it. So okay. Four more to, if you still had yours left from last time. Yep, I still did. So we've got 22 now, yeah? I didn't. Yeah. So uh, while uh, Herodotus is making these alarms go off, <laughs> <laughs> um, as Yarn's about to bite in the apple, she just casts Otto's irresistible dance on him, so he'll stop. Yeah. Then, uh, no, uh, um, Herodotus. Oh, Herodotus. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, no, not this again. <laughs> sure. And after a good like minute, she'll just. Try. My, how the turntables. <laughs> what do you mean a minute? Yeah. I've had a heart attack twice <laughs> during this time. Yes. It's uh, it's quite cruel what you're doing to Herodotus, actually, in his old age. You see his bones withering, and he lets out screams of agony as arthritis kicks in. He's doing if the robot. If to scream in agony, I'll stop it straight away. <laughs> yes. Um, I, w I will talk to... Lightning bolts, arthritis is still a major pain. I will talk to Hermes and Athena um, during the long rest. Well, during the during the apple eating, I guess, yeah, sure. um, as Hermes well. Hermes is eagerly tucking into the hero's feast, taking more than his fair share, uh, which may explain why you only got four hit points total. Um, <laughs> Athena, <laughs> Athena is very reservedly chewing on, we'll say, a bit of dried meat um, of this, what is a huge spread across the Olympian's table, which itself is a good almost 25 feet long. But here you see dried hog and uh, dried fish, but also well-prepared, smoked meats and sort of um, all sorts of vegetables from far and wide um, but yeah, uh, what would you like to talk to them about? Hermes and Athena <clears throat> I have great respect for you too seeing as among all the gods uh, you seem to respect the will of men more so than the other gods and so I will be blunt with you too the world is about to end if we do not stop Zeus and his plan. We can either be part of the ending and die with all of us when Typhon is released, or you can f fight and help us to stop him and be part of the new order when he is fallen, as is the pattern with these things. What do you say? Oh, yeah, man, new order? I Totally. Um, not under Zeus. I mean, can I be in charge? Is that a possibility? Is that okay? We I will discuss Zeus. that later. I, I, I'll, I can Zeus better than Zeus. Athena, tell him I can Zeus better than Zeus. And Athena will just look across and say, we will discuss it later. I hope you don't Zeus better than Zeus. Uh, well, you know, I, 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 I don't chase girls. You know, girls chase me <laughs> um, sometimes. Um <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm not quite sure what you're worried about. I've been to the future. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's good to hear. Um, 
Uh, Didn't you not say it was malleable, Herodotus? Because if it is, I'm still worried. Oh, oh you'll be dead, because there's, there's no such thing as whirlboards. Right. <laughs> right, well, um, at this point, Athena will um, sort of lean down to you for it, and uh, uh, she'll say, well, I, I will, of course, be with you. It's my intention to see this through as far as I possibly can. Although I am still quite weak, I have found my my spear again and my will to fight. Hermes, however, I have a special task for him. I would like to send him away. Why? And to do what? Well, what could be more important than this? Well, there is something Hermes must do if the worst comes to pass. I would rather not say because it will inspire feelings of doubt in you, but... If you wish me to tell you, I will. Tell us. There is no time for this ridiculousness. We need to know everything. Well, if you want to be so blunt about it, of course. Um, I want Hermes to gather as many of the races, the mortals he can, to take them as far from he can, far from Typhon as he possibly can. Should Zeus summon him, there may be some far-flung way that humanity, mortality can survive, but the closer they are to Mount Etna the sooner they will die. How about you just get him to evacuate the city? Uh, not just take a select few, but move people just a little bit out of the way instead of only a select group a long way away. I don't think Yari, you're really appreciating how dangerous Tython is. He is not a mere monster. He is the end of things. Yes, but you can't just choose... Well, it would be Brandomer. I wouldn't have any inclination of those with wealth. I would ask him to get a selection from each race and take them across the world if he can. But it, but if Typhon escapes, what hope is there of Hermes escaping? Well, it would buy us time to perhaps find a new way. Uh, I, I definitely think agree. There is any retreating from this battle. I, I, if, I agree with Ephina. I think it's important. If you truly wish for Hermes to come with us to the battle, he surely can do. But it would be our—it would be forfeiting the last chance we could possibly have should all things go wrong. I think it's important that Hermes be stealthy in this. Any sign that people are leaving or evacuating could alert our plans before we're ready. It's possible. Zeus's main gaze is focused on Mount Etna. Still, caution is prudent. He's very good at being stealthy. You're very good at being stealthy, Hermes. You can take people far from here without being noticed by Zeus or any of his allies. And um, he'll give an eager nod. Again, I, I would need you to tell me if you want this plan to happen or, or we can take Hermes with us. I do not see retreat as an option in this particular battle. I vote no. What do you all vote? I vote <clears throat> Hermes comes with us. I vote that we side with the goddess of wisdom. There must be hope. Diganus is off in the corner scribing, so... All right. <laughs> and Diganus, what say you? <laughs> I wasn't listening. Oh, okay. <laughs> it Kara? I think that the preservation of life is important. I think Hermes should go. So Aethon, what do you say? We've failed many great challenge, but we knew coming into this that we might fail. If there's any hope that mortality can live on, I say we take it. Let so you would go. have Hermes leave? Yes. Then that is the vote. Hermes will leave. I'm glad we could some, uh, work this problem out. Um, I understand your sentiment. I truly do. For it. But forgive me if I, even in the back of my mind, it gives me more courage, more courage to fight, knowing that if we fail, it is not the end of all things. Perhaps there will be a small time where mortals can scrape by in the wake of the beast. It is just that I have been trained and I have learned that victory 
is more assured when retreat is not an option. Mm. But mm. I will respect your wishes. Very well. Well, Hermes will do the honors of teleporting as once you've finished your feast here. Please do let me know. And in the meantime, I'll give you some time. Do think of those you've met and those you love. You'll need all the courage you can muster in the fight to come. Zeus is a formidable foe. He will strike me down in an instant, and most likely the same for you. But facing him together, perhaps we stand some form of chance. Speaking of which, uh, Hermes, I can recommend you some strong people who could carry on civilization, if you'd hear me out. Uh, roll a persuasion check, I'd say, on that one. Considering you were the one just ahead saying you're not allowed to choose people. <laughs> I was saying you're not allowed to choose people, but if you're gonna, then I have some suggestions. Sure. <laughs> Thus, the new world will be molded after <laughs> Yelling's yeah. choice. Bunch of thieves of from Argus. <laughs> How dare you assume such a thing? <laughs> Oh man, roll twenty is being super slow. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna roll. Yeah, sure, dice. go ahead and roll a dice. Yeah. Waiting for it. Plus fifteen, right? Yes. I mean, nice. it's, a, it's a hell of a roll. So, <laughs> dice. Why do I forget dice every bloody session? Okay, well that's a, that's a dirty twenty then. It's not great. Okay, well, um, yeah, I mean, it'd probably be enough, I'd say. And um, Hermes will sort of said, well. <laughs> With how quick I am, I don't want to brag, but I could get at least 100 people across. So, I mean, if you've got somebody you want to uh, usher in ahead of the queue, <laughs> go ahead. I mean, who, who do you want me to save? I can save anybody. Uh, Yarling's just going to, like, uh, if there's parchment around or anything, um, a list of all the people that... Uh, so all of the people that are alive in her family, the... Um, <laughs> so, like, people like Pythagoras, all that all that stuff. Okay, all, help your, all your friends. All, my, all of the friends. Um, like, just anyone who's been a help to us as a party, she's put down on this list um, okay. to her sure. best recollection. And she'll... Um, Hermes look down the list saying, wow, this is a pretty impressive list of people. I'm not all done. your friends? She just keeps going. You're super <laughs> popular, Pythagoras, Cleopatra. Oh, who wouldn't worry a... about Pythagoras? He's probably dead already. Why is Cleopatra on their list? <laughs> she gave me a nice thing. I just want her to pay the favor. It's the least I can do. I trapped her son in Pandora's box. Let's just hope that we win. <laughs> yeah, I can get these people. Uh, if, if all ends, Yaling, do you want to be my friend too? I'd, I'd love to be your friend. Um, at the very like top of the list, though, um, is Larkin's name. Just, just in, in case it's a possibility. Okay. I am going to go look for this Larkin. And... Um, then I'll go to the rest of the people. Larkin's the most important. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to get off then. Um, you guys go kill Zeus. Uh, bring me back like a lock of beard hair or something cool. And then I'll wear it and I'll be the new Zeus, but a better Zeus. So the whole <laughs> of the thing world you go, is Hermes. like doomed because he spends the rest of his life looking for Larkin, who's dead. That's maybe what might happen, is he's <laughs> around looking for Larkin, and he's never going to progress down the list. <laughs> God, he's the god of medicine. He might be able to help her if he finds her. That's a good point. It's a good point. Uh, just a quick, tr quick trip to Hades and back, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fry, what were you going to say? Before you run off, Hermes, this apple, uh, will it work in battle off Mount Olympus? Ah, uh, needs some time to sink into models, I think. Would work for me, or for Athena, uh, but for you, mm, you're going to have to rest if you want to uh, get the full effects of it. Very well. And I'll, he'll take his first bite. <laughs> um, so around that time, I think Antigonus has finished scribing the circle. And once again, I cast Planner Li, and I reach into the ground and s speak to Hades directly, and I say, Hades... There is but one man who has ever outsmarted the gods, and I wish for him to be on our side. Can I borrow Sisyphus for a while? <laughs> Does I request a planner ally from uh, from the underworld. Sisyphus. I lament letting go of that wretch. Tell me, you met him before? Yes, he was uh, quite buff from pushing that boulder, and his wisdom was extended beyond even... Well, I sort of look over my shoulder at Athena. Even some of the uh, gods themselves. He cheated death, and he knew how to defy them. Perhaps wow. he would be wise in this battle. 
I was welcome to you to take my monsters, but to take one of those who I punish, well, <laughs> I, I admire your cruelty, Antigonus. Maybe it will drive him insane, that one taste of freedom, before I suck him back into the pits of Tartarus. That's that's fine. Yeah, definitely. Just a just a cruel joke. This is <laughs> Antigonus, you dog. Well, <laughs> taste it. let him taste something fu- something sweet. Let him prance in the open airs of the mortal plane. Give him time. Give him the love of a woman, and then, when when he thinks himself free for good, only then will I. Drag him back down to Tartarus to push his rock once again. The bargain is struck. Bring him forth. Oh. I pull out of the ground and I try to pull Sisyphus out. All right, sure. There is an overwhelming crack in the marble floor of Mount Olympus. And um, Tartarus, just a bit of Greek knowledge here. If you were to drop an anvil, well, according to Greeks, if you were to drop, to drop an anvil from the heavens, it would take nine days to reach Earth. That's what they believe. And then if it dropped through the Earth, it would take another nine days to hit Tartarus. So they effectively think that Tartarus is as far below the Earth as the sky is above them. So um, somehow, in the space of a few seconds, <laughs> through that colossal amount of Earth, all the way up through the bottom of Mount Olympus, there is a giant hand that seems to pull itself and wrench itself through this crack, pulling apart. And what comes out next is not another hand, but it is a boulder. And this boulder is thrown up as though he's been carrying it and yet now he needs both hands to wrench himself up. He just throws it over and it crashes into the marble and then Sisyphus pulls himself up after it. And indeed, he is in his time in Tartarus for all the punishment he suffered. He is actually now a quite a formidable figure. He stands some 15 feet tall as he looks down at you and picks up <laughs> the boulder once again. And he says, you have freed me and here I am back on Olympus. Everything's coming up, Sisyphus. <laughs> well, we need your favor here if you succeed and take away Zeus and the power of these gods. Yes, 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 Zeus. Just, just give me a second. I've been trapped in there for hundreds of years. Oh, gosh. Who's your friend? Ah, this is Sisyphus, the only man to cheat death that I know of. Of course, it worked for a while, and then, well. Antigonus, who's your friend? Enchanté, my dear. <laughs> my name is... Just... <laughs> Yarning. The proper introductions have been made. We are to fight Zeus, a fight which I imagine will be the death of myself and all of you. What say we have a feast, a party, or something before uh, before we, we all meet our inevitable end? Oh, well, we've uh, left you some chicken little... wings. <laughs> chicken wings. A rare delicacy. <laughs> he'll, uh, he'll go over and take some chicken wings which are apparently there um, <laughs> Antigonus has made us a feast you're more than welcome to join us Antigonus you are full of surprises tell me and he'll just be stuffing his face with chicken as he talks crumbs and sort of bits of flesh dropping from his lips what bargain did you strike with Hades to get me out he, he ah. wanted to hold on to me he did well Hades believes that you'll come back soon, but as far as I'm concerned, if you take out Zeus, I'll do everything I can to make you stay. <laughs> uh, you're a good one, Antigonus. I knew it when I first saw you. Uh, are you rolling a deception there? Or? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, sure. How'd I do? How did I do? 19. 19's not bad. I'm going to make... Um him a reasonably okay mob because he's gonna have to be worthwhile of the plan our ally right so uh what should i make um this guy just a second i'm i've got something in mind i just want to check the stone CRs. giant dream walker uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is gonna be some form of giant but i'm thinking he's just gonna be a fomorian cool sweet because he is from tartarus so you know yeah uh, it makes sense that he would be oh, some kind of monster, monstrous giant that he is. Oh, that's not, I'll have to roll his manual because it's not on roll 20. But I've got a stat sheet here, no problems. Uh, yeah, so he's a Fomorian. Quite, he's a CR8 creature. Uh, quite strong. Not too, not overwhelming, but, you know, yeah. worthy, yeah. Of this, worthy of the summon. Nice. 
Um, so he sits there still m munching away. Um, and this is all happening during the long rest, I'm going to say. So if there's anything else... I, I'm eating my apple right after I finish this. Sure thing. Yeah. Is there anything anyone else wishes to do before the long... Any questions they have for the gods or... I'll leave it up to you. I just walk up to Athena after, you know, getting ready to go and I just say, I I've just always wondered one thing. Well, you've come to the right person. What's the point? What's the meaning of all this? Why? Well, what's the alternative? Chaos? We were born of chaos. And only what we have shambled together is any semblance of order. There is no reason other than to be. Because the alternative is much, much worse. Mm. If you think I have any more inclination than you yourself, I offer this to you. A mortal has more insight of the meaning to be than an immortal. Your time is precious and you spend it searching meaning. We, however, lose insight into such matters. We get complacent. We lose our, our strive for knowledge, our hunger for understanding and meaning. You, however, Antigonus, it is bright in you indeed. Hold on to that and perhaps one day you'll be able to teach me. Well, we make it through this and I sort of turn around and I look at the party eating a meal, resting, chatting with each other for a moment. I uh, I think the world could handle itself without the help of the divine. I hope that I... you understand if well, maybe we move on without you. Maybe this is correct and that you are, it's time for you to rest and time for us to try to make this world our own. Indeed. I've come to be thinking the same myself. Whether or not Hermes seems pure now, there's nothing to say what he will be like come a few hundred years down the line. Zeus himself was once full of good nature, as you would know. A great friend of Prometheus, together they were the greatest of friends. And he was more than... I was the first he showed the humans too, when he created them. And I've never seen a being so full of joy and happiness and well-meaning. But look at him today. Oh, the mortals are not infallible to the changing of their whims. You are right, and should we defeat Zeus, I will be the first to lay down my shield and join the stars. Well, I appreciate the help. I know that I was not the uh, best servant of yours in my early days. Hmm. Books, I always kept a close eye on you. Yeah. But of course, you found your way. Prometheus is no, no fool. He is worthy of your worship, just as I was. I found it to be so. Uh, join your friends be happy for what little time we can let us hope that there's many more times like this in the future yes and I'll walk over and I'll like put my hand on Kara's back and put my other hand on Pruitt's shoulder take some food in my mouth sorry this isn't as good as yesterday anyway hmm. whenever you're ready All right. Um, with that, has everyone finished their long rest? Yeah. Yes. All right. So everybody gets the benefits of the long rest here, although the overall time it's taking you to long rest with the apple um, in mind is around an hour or so. And a half an hour to an hour with all that you've been doing. And therefore, um, Hermes starts to... Um, do some of his sort of godly like celestial magic that's very confusing and unlike much you've seen although it can't be used on models athena can make her own way to mount etna of course being a god but for you hermes uh, creates a teleportation circle to a place that he knows very well the city of katane on um on um, sicily uh, in the roman empire very close to sort of a very flat island to Sicily, except for some mountains like Etna, which rise out of the sky, rise out of the earth um, like pointed teeth. Um, so they're visible from hundreds of miles around. And indeed, the um, city of Katane, town of Katane, is um, around at the foot of Mount Etna itself. So um, he'll look down at this uh, teleportation circle that he's creating and say, well, you know, I'm going to go find this Larkin um, and I'm going to find this Pythagoras and uh, all your friends are uh, yelling and I'm going to take them to somewhere super safe. I don't know where yet. It's going to be somewhere really, you know, you can count on me. And then when I bring them all back, we can all be friends. huh? I just want to say one thing. Um, uh, Larkin died a few years ago. 
Oh. Hmm. It's uh, going to uh, take time to run to Hades and then petition him to get Larkin back in her body, which by now is probably going to smell a bit. I just want to be straightforward about that. Box. She's where? Sorry? In Pandora's box. Do you have Pandora's box? Do I have Pandora's box? <laughs> I'm not sure what happened to it in the end. Really. Like, I, caught, I caught Julius Caesar and Thing, uh, their son in it. You caught Cesare in it, yeah, and it belonged to him. So, what did you do with it afterwards? She probably kept it if it oh. had Larkin in it. Yeah, sure. Um, but she wouldn't have opened it like for anything. Okay. She would have like wanted to keep whatever safe. Sure. Uh, and I say, would do you have it with you? I mean, I could try, and um, I can run it down for Hades, see what he can do. Yeah, she'll she'll give it to Hermes. All right, no promises. Um. He's a bit fickle about letting people go. It doesn't happen too often. So I'm surprised Sisyphus is here. He was here at Olympus once before and he made us all eat his friends. And that's why Zeus punished him to push this rock up a hill for all eternity. And to be honest, it wasn't even that good food. Yeah, this is um, about as awkward as every family dinner we've had the past two years. <laughs> <laughs> um, Harry, just a quick question. With that long rest, do I get to roll for fruit for my... Uh, um, yeah, sure, I can say can do, yeah. Okay. Roll for fruit. Only in D&D. &D. <laughs> Roll for fruit. For the cornucopia? Yeah, I got four plus uh, one, so five. All right, so yeah, five pieces of fruit from your uh, horn of plenty, courtesy of Amalte. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, the teleportation circle is ready. Uh, if there's any final businesses you want to do with the gods, Athena will say to you, I, I will make my own way there. It won't take me much time. There may be a, a few minutes, maybe a half an hour before you see me. Try not to engage with Zeus before then. Why aren't you just coming with us? Mm, godly magic does not work on other gods. I will get there as soon as possible, but Hermes magic cannot work on me. Similarly, my magic will not work on Zeus, but a spear is as true to a mortal as it is immortal. I can still strike at him. Yeah, I look forward to your allegiance and uh, Godspeed. <laughs> I'm not familiar with this expression, but Godspeed to you as well. Um, in that case, I'll set off now and I shall see you soon. Be careful. I'm not sure what to expect, but if Zeus has already been there for some time, we may have to expect the worst. Then we should make haste. Can I just hop in the circle? All right. And the rest of you? Yeah. Bruit hops into the circle and yep. transforms back into werebore form. This time it just looks a lot gnarlier than it has before. <laughs> Gnarly, <Hey>. man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, check out this werebore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, get Kara would have followed right after Antigonus. Sure. <laughs> what about um, Athon and uh, Herodotus? And yeah, I would have went in. Yeah. Going in, yeah, cool. If you're at the ready. All right, so um, um, let me say, you all want to get a, like kneel down or something? It doesn't. It you, you can stand up if you want. It made us be a bit uncomfortable. Oh, uh, uh, Pru will go down on all fours. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, um, okay, here we go. Close your eyes and you'll be in a Karatea without a moment's notice, I promise. And um, he begins. And obviously, I instruct the Myrmidon and S Sisyphus to come over to. <laughs> oh, right, okay, yeah. Sisyphus. Will, um, he'll actually bring some of the heroes' feast with him and sit in the. Uh, sit in the circle with you and the myrmidons with you as well yeah. um right okay uh to do so uh, hermes will sort of get take off from the ground with his winged sandals and um he'll begin to sort of swirl around you and even though there's no dust on this perfect like sort of pearlescent marble of mount olympus this seems to rise from almost nowhere and it surrounds you like a sort of cyclone a dust devil sort of cutting off the side of olympus and um you start to hear the sounds of thunder and lightning around you once again, as though you've left Olympus. Um, and then the sort of atmosphere around you changes in terms of how hot you are. You seem to feel a bit sort of more 
uh, claustrophobic, as though the atmosphere itself is pressuring around you. And suddenly enough, the cyclone dissipates and you are indeed in another place altogether. You are in a town with, um, it seems to be Roman by design. You'd have been to Rome several times by now. This place is on the coast, but far into the distance, around 10 or 12 miles away, you can see the rising slopes of Mount Etna, upon which there are no lightning bolts or thunder. There is, however, a huge plume of smoke, like any you've ever seen in the past, that's rising into the clouds. But the clouds themselves are only made up of smoke. It is a clear day here in um, Sicily. There are no lightning. There is no black clouds of thunder. It is only um, the black smoke of Mount Etna, which seems to be on the point of eruption. Uh, there is no signs of Zeus, however, here in the city itself. What you do see are several Roman citizens and slaves sort of panicking and running around, escaping what seems to be all sorts of animals that have been sent into a furor, a really uh, heavy craze of panic and anger in which has sent them to attacking the citizenry here. This includes horses that they rode, dogs that they trusted, all with sort of snarling, frothing mouths and uh, red reddened eyes piercing at those that they once considered their friends whatever's happening here it seems to be affecting the animals first and they all have effectively the effects of rabies on them they have gone completely insane and in chasing who they um once were considered domesticated now ravenous and wild and you are sort of transported into this forum this um a big open space in the center of town. Um, you see only a few people around here and they all are on the escape from these things, locking themselves behind doors. Nobody really pays attention to the fact that a cyclone has appeared and in it has appeared a giant and um, six uh, mortals as well and a flaming myrmidon. Um, having traveled, have I been here before? Uh, yeah, I'd say you've probably been to um, uh, Katahe before. Uh, it is a very large city in Sicily. It's been uh, traded back and forth between the Carthaginians, the Greeks, and the Romans over the course of the Punic Wars. Um, now it's in the hold of the Romans. It's seen as quite a quite a jewel to have in, in your empire. It's a big port city. Um, the Romans have obviously taken very good care of it. Um, there are Roman flags everywhere. There are You see several legion around, but even they are uh, confused and panicked at the eruption of Mount Etna and the... Um, the huge amount of not only domesticated animals, but you'll see looking down some streets, there's, well, not about, you know, se se several pockets, puddles almost of wriggling snakes and frogs and insects that sort of um, chase down people as well here. Um, there are what you see hanging from the pillars and encircling them like a convolvulus plant is just lungs of green snakes uh, that look uh, immediately from the bright colors on them, immediately some sort of venomous animal. Um, Pruitt would like to look around, uh, determine if the source of the danger is Zeus or something else, and if he can't determine what it is, he's probably going to ask somebody yeah. after okay. saving them from animals. <laughs> All right, sure, yeah, and there's no need to roll initiative on this. These are sort of dogs and horses, and, you know, you can save people from animals like that, mm -hmm. no problem. Um are you trying to pull someone aside then, or do you want to try well, and figure first, out? first I'm going to see if I can just determine it based yeah. off of visuals, and if really? not, then I'll ask somebody. Yeah. Only a religion. I was going to say, I, I was going to ask, do I know anything about this sort of, what would cause this? Yeah, only a religion. Religion, yeah. Y'all in religious uh, stuff. 15. Mm, 15 is difficult. 18. Yeah. 18, yeah. I'll, I mean, with those two roles, I can tell you that neither of these things are in the purview oh. of Zeus. Sorry, it's, it's 20, uh, 20, not 18. Okay, yeah, he's got. I'll say the same for you, though. I mean, it's this is very esoteric religion we're talking about at this moment, so not many people know about this kind of magic or this kind of god. But um, the use of poisonous animals um, and sending animals insane is not something that Zeus does. There's never been a documented story or mythology of Zeus sending animals insane. Uh, I'm going to try at a very safe distance, try and talk to one of the venous, venomous snakes. Okay, interesting. Uh, yeah, sure, you're going to speak with... Oh, you're a Giantai, of course. Okay. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Okay, indeed. Yeah, uh, and why not, for the sake of it, for using your good race, you'll take in a point of initiative um, to use whenever you wish um, for using <laughs> your... Very rarely taken advantage of racial trait that you've got there but yeah okay one of the snakes that slithers past busy in them in the action of chasing down what looks to be an old noble and although the snake isn't fast the old noble is just as slow he's just hobbling along and the snake <laughs> sort of slivering along behind they're both moving at about three miles per hour 
And um, go ahead. <laughs> what do you want to say to this thing? No, is that what I look like? <laughs> yeah, you're just looking at another doppelganger that seems to be in Herodotus's shape. Right? <laughs> it's just a mirror. It's just a mirror. Yeah. <laughs> it, excuse me. Yes. <laughs> so why are you chasing that man? What is going on here? Uh, well, the world is going to turn back to the snakes, the slippery, slithery, sordid things from beneath the earth. Now is our time to rise. So I will bite this old man, and then I will eat him. An amazing. I, I would love to join us as a pot. You want to bite too? Sure, but can I ask, who, who told you about this uh, world being given back to the snakes? Nobody told me. I was under a rock, and then something happened, a large crack, a boom like lightning, and I knew it was time. I could feel it. Same for my brothers and sisters. They all came with me. We traveled in a great river of scales and slick slithering into the town. Many have already gorged themselves, but I, I am yet to catch this old man. I will help you catch this old man. If, <laughs> why, are the, why are the uh, dogs, horses, they're all acting the same too. I don't understand. They feel it as well. Time for the, the beasts of the world to act together. Take away mortality. Take away the two-legged ones. Herodotus is backing off. He's scared shit of this. If he's, if he's after old men, <laughs> he's stepping back. All you're hearing, Herodotus, yeah, right, yeah. Now. But, yeah, all yeah. You're hearing right now is just like... I, I saw it chasing an old man, so I'm scared. Right. Sure. All right. All right. Thank, thank you for telling me. Just uh, keep me updated if you figure anything out. I'm going to discuss... You said you would help me catch the old man. Yes, I did, didn't I? I, uh... <sighs> How slow was it? Was it really slow? They're both extremely slow. <laughs> you know, if you think about somebody using a Zimmer frame, this is how slow they're moving. Did he stop to talk to me, the venomous snake? Yeah, so the guy's got a good 10 feet lead on the snake right now, oh. which to them is like, you know, a Grand Prix lap. Yes, I'll, I'll help. And what she'll do is she'll just kneel down and she'll nudge it just a little bit. Yes, thank you. <laughs> this will get me what I need. And he keeps slithering and the old man just makes his way and shuts the door. And the snake just goes towards the door. You're not sure what he's going to do to it. When he gets there, you can stick around for an hour to find out. <laughs> you know, this is what happens when the snake reaches the door. But um, for now, that is the only information you get from this snake. I'll just relay it to the part. So, um, so I just spoke with the snake. Uh, the the they believe it's time for the beasts. Uh, they've come all this way to rid the world of uh, the two-legged ones. I'm assuming he means uh, mortal people, and, and, and I don't. Yes, they so don't know not... where, but it's just a feeling that it's their time. This is definitely not the power of Zeus. Uh, Antigonus, in your time working with priests, does any god have this power? I will say they did say that uh, a flash of uh, uh, maybe lightning struck the earth and that's when they awoke to this. Yeah, I don't know if I read anything about this in books. I can check. Hey, man, yeah, go ahead. Um, I, roll, uh, I think I might know the metagame answer. Does <laughs> Yeah, well, if you want to metagame the answer, you can do. But obviously, um, right. <laughs> Certain the certain things associated with certain high CR creatures is quite obvious in some regards, but you know, for the time being, let's keep it under wraps. Huh? Sure, okay. <laughs> I, get, I get what you're saying there, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. I got a 16 on that religion check. Is that 16 on the die or 16? No, it's a total 16. Ah, right, okay. Yeah. Uh, you don't really glisten more than it's not the typical, um, no, this is boat MO of Zeus right, yeah. outside of my purview, but um. This seems kind of advantageous, and I start shooting fire bolts at these. No, you can't. Do <laughs> go by, we do gunslinger rules here. You can't just go around getting your grit back off harmless <laughs> things. Just summon like thirty myrmidons. From the <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, I'll be like, uh, Archimedes, 
Uh, take flight and have a look around. All right, yeah. Archimedes, who's been transported with you, thankfully, will take off from your shoulder with a flanzer. Yes, yes, no need to ask twice. Let's see, let's see. And he'll take off and with a flutter up into the skies and he'll look around and say, nothing good, nothing good, Merlin. Just, uh, just a lot of panic, a lot of frogs. I'm feeling quite peckish, actually. Maybe I'll try. And with, if you don't interrupt him, he'll sort of swoop down and he will manage to grab a frog. Um, and, you know, he'll pull it back up into the sky before he snacks down, though he'll keep uh, observing, saying, a lot of smoke, a lot of, oh, there's something there on the mountain. Can you see it? Um, well, perception check, I'll say, for... Uh, uh, I can't remember what his perception is. Yeah, but... Well, while he's doing that, I'll just kind of say to the party, you know, mm. I can't remember the last time Archimedes actually <laughs> came back not dead but let's hope this is the the first time no no one triggered when i called him archimedes i (laughs) i called him archimedes on purpose all right did you i actually (laughs) i thought you accidentally called him alamedes no 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 Uh, obviously i called yeah Yeah. um 17 on a dice i don't know what his spot is i can't remember i think it's five he'll look across and say i guess advantage anyway yeah i see a bird on the mountain A, a bird of some size it I can't, maybe it's closer. Oh, depth perception is very difficult. If I'm right, I'm uh, uh, Merlin. uh, There is a large bird on the mountain. Something to look out for, perhaps. I'll relay that. There's a a large bird on the mountain. Uh, That's very good. Sisyphus, does this ring a bell to you? Large bird, should that ring a bell to me? Maybe it should ring a bell to you. Thought large birds were your purview. Ah, I was wondering, but I wanted to make sure I wasn't crazy. Why is Prometheus's vulture on the mountaintop? Well, why are we here exactly? Is it to defeat Zeus or? Perhaps, perhaps he beat us here. and That makes me excited and I run that way. Okay, you're running towards the mountain. Show you can do. Um, oh, oh, here we go again. I'll yeah. try and uh, catch so up as slow as I can. Sure. Yeah, I will just talk to um, Sisyphus. Yeah. Sisyphus, and just go. Yes, Zeus issue. We're going to kill him. Okay. And now she's like, kind of like running, kind of like telling him to come along as well. Very well. Yes. And he'll he'll walk as you run. So that's all he has to do to keep pace with his size. Um, in a in a practice the... maneuver, uh, uh, will go down all fours, transform into boar form, and just pick up Herodotus from oh. between the legs. <laughs> <laughs> and just sure. charge after Antigone. <laughs> all right. Very well. Um, Great, yeah. Uh, so you're making your way over to the mountain, and you'll see that as you pass, several people have sort of barricaded themselves in temples and in homes. Uh, some of them haven't made it. You even see a few corpses lining the way of the streets, um, but animals don't seem interested in feasting, only killing as they leave the corpses unmarred and go for the next things in their path. You see bulls trying to knock down doors, cows trying to sort of herd around people. You see horses as well um, rearing up to kick down temple pillars. You see dogs that have gr- uh, formed into wild packs that are chasing people around, but all of which you know to be um, inconsequential given the gravity of what is about to happen. Uh, these people may survive, they may not, but you know, you can choose to try and save them. Bigger fish to fry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nope. Fair, <laughs> fair dues, fair dues, makes sense. All right, well, um, all right, let me get this all ready. So yeah, uh, you make your way to the mountain. Um, you, I, you will leave the town. There'll be a short space of time between traveling between the town and the mountain for itself. But there seems to be some sort of um, road here. And it's difficult to put. It's not exactly Roman, but it is in the same style as Roman. It is straight. It is cobbled. It seems to be something older, though, much showing much more decaying ancient um, designs about it. And eventually this road leads to what seems to be... Um, a pillared cause, well, not causeway, a pillared sort of path into the mountain itself, from which you can see a caved sort of tunnel at the end of it, which seems to turn dark. And um, I will put you on this map because above that cave tunnel uh, lands a gigantic bird, a poor sort of digging its huge talons into this cave, letting it crumble down almost as though it's trying to claw it off so it can't be accessed. It just looks ac- um, across the 
open space ahead of it. It lets out a hideous core that sort of echoes through this sort of valley-esque place you've come to at the foot of the mountain. Uh, and I'll put you on the map here. Hang on. Uh, do, 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 do. I just want to make sure everything's completely correct because there's a lot of people on there now. The Myrmidons here with you, Antigonus. Uh, Fomorian here is with you, Antigonus, as well. Which I'm pretty sure it's a huge creature, so I'll make it huge. Um, Sisyphus there holding his boulder, which he may or may not use in combat, I guess. <laughs> um, but this guy is the. I like the idea of Sisyphus not throwing his boulder. He just rolls, rolls it super it. fast. And it just rolls it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rolls it and then rolls it back over them. <laughs> that's, a, that's his multi attack. Sisyphus rolls his boulder over you several times. Um, okay, sure. So I'll put you on this map. I hope everyone sees okay. This, this is a lot of stuff going on on this. I'm map. Not on still on the map previous yet. map. Yeah, sure. He there, there we go. Yeah. All right, Ooh, so you boy, guys that's... can see the bird at the end of the thing over here, at the end of the path. Fighting Big Bird? Fighting Big Bird, or as it's yeah. known in Greek mythology, and I don't know why this is, it's called the Caucasian Eagle. Mm. Huh. Yeah, interesting. Obviously, the word Caucasian has several meanings. It's not just a so white... it bald eagle. <laughs> yeah, bald eagle, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's the Caucasian Eagle, famous for um, severing the liver from Prometheus every day as a punishment for his enlightenment of humanity uh, you'd know this bird very well by this point um um antigonus although you'd never seen it um it's, it matches all the sort of paintings and vases it's matching all the sort of descriptions in ancient mythology about prometheus and you know it immediately to be the caucasian eagle given new purpose given that prometheus was sunk in the tartarus itself um it just sort of perches around, flutters its wings and sort of arches them, stretching them out and pulling them to its side. It turns around and perches, narrowing its sort of beady eyes down the path and just looking from one of you to the other. It seems not intent on attacking yet. Oh, is it hungry? Hmm. Uh, I don't know whether this has become an ally or still an enemy controlled by Zeus, so I would hear the latter now. Uh, Prout will buck off uh, Herodotus, get up in werebear form, werebore form, mm -hmm. and then howl at the bird trying to scare it away. All right, sure. Uh, if you're showing a sign of sort of aggression to the bird, I'll say go ahead and roll initiative. Yeah, well, it's it's more of the, you know, the, well, the it's, it, it's waiting for an excuse. It, if you come any closer, <laughs> it's going for it anyway. So, all right, I'll add him. I've already rolled his initiative. He's got a five, so not fantastic. But let me just grab him. Yeah. Ten. Five. Okay. I too got a five. <laughs> All right. No worries. No worries. That's Three. Bad. Oh wow. Not great rolls here. <laughs> Add turn. Um, three for Antigonus. So you've already got it. And you got a five, yelling. Yeah. Eighteen. There we go. So I've got yelling, Pruitt, Antigonus, Athon, Herodotus, uh, Cara. What did you get? Uh, Eleven. 11 okay jeez <laughs> it's not our combat all right so a lot going on in this combat a lot more than meets the eye maybe is but okay Pruitt, it's your turn oh sorry let me roll for uh do you want to roll for them i'll send Merman oh. and axe on your turn antigonus um axe on my turn okay yeah and what about Sisyphus? More. i'll roll him now he's a 1d20 flat so 14 not bad Yeah, so Pruitt will, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Uh, Pruitt will use his action to try and make an intimidation against the bird with a howl. Okay, sure. Um, are you rolling intimidation for that? or? Um, actual move? Check. Yeah. I think I'm, oh, I'm not proficient in it, dang. Maybe I won't. <laughs> um, I will instead. Still 15 foot above the off the ground, this bird right now, being that it's right. perched above the cave entrance. In fact, why are you there? Make me a perception check for it. Okay. Natural one. Nah, don't see anything, unfortunately. Yep. <laughs> okay. And Herodotus, make me a perception check too. But that's it, I think, all I need from that. Yep. Uh, first one was cocked, and then I rolled a four, so that's seven. Seven, yeah, you don't see anything either, unfortunately. 
great. Okay. Nothing important, yeah. What about pa- so uh, what about I Archimedes? Don't... Does he see anything? Uh, I'm going to say you can get one roll for it, so yeah. probably not just yet. Yeah, you can roll on your turn. I'll let you roll again on your turn. For well, he gets advantage, so yeah. All right, so Pruitt, what would you like to do? Ooh, Sixteen for plus my action. I... I'll go for Pruitt first. And then. Uh, for my action, I will ready an attack if anything should come within my range. And for my bonus action, I'm going to incite the bird to try and find a weakness. All right. So I don't think a bird has super good charisma. No, it doesn't. 16. Uh, that doesn't beat my 22. All right, sure. So you get um, your sneak attack on the bird if you wish to have it, regardless of its positioning. All right. Um, it's my is that turn. Your turn. Yeah, sure. Herodotus, it's your turn. So, uh, so um, Archimedes' perception was 16 plus whatever he's got. I think it's three or five. I can't remember. Yeah, sure. That would be enough. Um, although um, this would obviously seem to be the bird that Archimedes was describing, there is another heavy beating of wings in the area that seems to be coming closer. Oh. <laughs> Oh, what's that? And I'll have a look up. Uh, make me percep- Well, this will be, I'll say, a bonus action at this point. Yeah. If you want to make a perception check to look what's coming. Yeah, yeah, I'll take a bonus action to do yeah, that. Bonus action, perception, thinks fair, so go ahead. Ooh. Fuck's sake, four again, so seven. Well, yeah, can't see it, but you can hear it. <laughs> oh, uh, it's, heavy beating. it's just the sun. <laughs> yeah, and at this point, there is a huge <laughs> burst of lava coming from the top of Mount Etna, and it just travels down and into the ocean it's traveled so far. And then another going in the opposite direction, and then several coming out at once. But fortunately, they are so massive and so tra- so far traveling that they are not immediately hitting the foot of the mountain. Uh, for the rest of my action, I'm going to hold my action where I am. Okay. All right. Uh, you, what action do you want to do? Uh, you know. Um, you have to, you have to, if you want to ready a spell, you can do, but it will fizzle if the um, the event does not come to pass. So. so, is there any? Can I just sort of like put myself behind at the back of the pack, or like to the yeah, end? Yeah, you can move. I mean, oh, no, no, to, I to mean, the end. Of- if you, you give me a specific circumstance for your yeah. ready action to go off, and then it needs to be a specific action. You can't if I, say, okay, if I get attacked, I will cast blur. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, sure. Um, I think that's fair. Yeah. No worries then. If you don't get attacked, of course, it fizzles and you lose the well, spell. Well, if I don't get attacked, I'll still cast it because <laughs> it'll be oh, right. well, still worth well be cast. Ca- might as well cast it now <laughs> because yeah, okay. it will either fizzle or you know, yeah. and it's a long spell to go through. So you know, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want blur, then? Yes, I will cast blur. Yeah. Cool. You got blur on. All right. Sure thing. Disadvantage on you for the time being. Um, but okay. Uh, it is actually this thing's turn now, as um, the beating of wings you hear just uh, scrapes down uh, with a huge horrible roar not anything you'd like to hear a bird do but something more lizard like oh, no. crashes down into the sands and scrapes across knocking over a pillar and it's sort of very um, not very graceful landing it sort of pulls itself up and beats its heavy black wings into a big gust surrounding itself in sand and dirt and when that all rests down there is an adult black dragon in its wake seems to have joined the fray. The Ladean dragon from Tartarus itself. No. And it's his turn. Only I so, do dragons here. Yeah, well, we'll soon see. When uh, he takes his turn, um, which is going to be um, a Frightful Presence. But he can do Frightful Presence and make three attacks. Well, so he'll use Frightful Presence. Everyone well, 120 feet. We're all immune. Are you, are you immune to frame? Oh, because of Hero's Feast. Hero's right? Feast. Yeah. yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, so he tries that, fails. Uh, he'll go over to you, Herodotus, immediately. And you've got Blur on, so all of these at disadvantage. Um, and he will make two attacks, uh, three attacks, sorry, one with its bite, two with its claws. So bite, claw, claw. So a 20, a 20, and an 18. I will cast Shield. All right, sure. It sort of clatters against your shield uh, as you're trying to get rid of it. The, so um, the, the bite will hit. Yeah, the the bite. Oh no, it's a twenty. The bite because you've got blur on. So oh yeah, so no. They, they, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, oh right, yeah, yeah. So they all miss. All right, cool. Uh, <coughs> so Lee, which I believe. Thank, thank God for that. Do yeah, blur's very good. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I don't think to do. I'm just going to check because I'm pretty sure. Mm, I could be really mean here. <laughs> it could be super mean. Uh, but this is the way it's written, unfortunately. Uh, a dragon has blind sight, so the, the effects of blur don't really matter to him because he can, he, he can see through 
sort of tricks of the eye and stuff. He's got blind sight, yeah. So effectively, what's hit you is a 29, a 24, and a 29. He doesn't have advantage, though, Harry, so it's just 129. Uh, 29. Oh, yeah, sorry, that's right. Well pointed out. So 129 hits yeah, you from the bite. So the bite hits, yeah. All right. Uh, so 16 piercing plus 7 acid. Now, do you want to use your arcane ward first, or do you rather let that hit your... Um, uh, my temporary hit points. Temporary hit points, uh, would okay. it, I mean, would it do that, or would my arcane ward just naturally do it's it? difficult. I don't think there's any rules Any written. attacker yeah. is immune to this. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so it, it only dictates if you can use arcane ward or your um, temporary hit points first, so I'll just let you choose. I'll choose my temporary hit points. How much was it in total, sorry? Uh, 25. So you lose your 18, and you take 7 damage. Or you okay. take 7 damage to your ward, if you like. Yeah, 7 damage to my ward, yeah. Okay, leaving it at 28. And you've got no, you got 28 ward, but no temporary hit points left. Um, so how much was it to my ward? Sorry, seven. Seven damage. So yeah. it's 30 left on my ward. 30, my ward's 30, 37. 30. All right, okay, sure. Uh, well, I'll end the uh, dragon's turn, uh, which comes around to Sisyphus, who thankfully will turn around immediately, shouldering his boulder, and step to this drake <laughs> and say, uh, <laughs> uh, it's been ages since I've had a good tumble. And um, he will roll his multi-attack with... I'm going to have to roll his manually because he's not on thing. Plus nine with a great club. Um, yeah, so he'll roll these twice. On the 20, plus nine with 28 and a 19. Um, I think they both hit. A dragon's AC is 19. So nice. uh, he will go with um, 3d8 plus six on both. Okay. Eight plus six. So the dragon takes twenty-one and fifteen for thirty-six damage, which is halved because his great axe, his great sorry, his club is not magical. So just to let you know, Harry, my sorry. arcane ward only took two points of damage. It wasn't actually sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, two points of damage. That's fine. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't know what I'm saying because now the dragon doesn't have immunity to mundane weapons, so he takes the full thirty-six damage. Nice. Which ends Sisyphus' turn. Comes down to you, Aethon. All right. So we were stepping forward to deal with this giant bird. Mm -hmm. uh, and he pulls his spear out of the shadow this column is making. Uh, but as he hears the dragon lands behind him, he'll uh, take the spear around the corner and just fire off three Eldritch Blasts at it. All right. Sure thing. At the bird? Uh, at the dragon. At the dragon. Okay. Sure Get our thing. priorities. Uh -huh. We're playing Dungeons and Dragons after all. That's, uh -huh. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, wow, yeah, okay, the 29 and the 20 certainly hit. So, uh, 6 plus 14, 24 damage. Gotta love it. Roll crit damage? I did. You gotta love it when your regular damage is three times your crit. Yeah. <laughs> 6 on the crit, 14 on the uh, normal. Yeah. You rolled double ones on the crit, didn't you? I did, yep. <laughs> oh my oh, gosh. That's unfortunate. <laughs> but there you go, 20 damage is 20 damage. And this thing's already starting to look a bit, um, you know, damaged from this fight he's got holes through its wings from these eldritch blasts that hit him and um sisyphus's great clubs have done, by all means almost floored the thing with how hard they hit but um is that any turn Athon? is there anything else you'd like to do uh yeah that'll, that'll be my go all right sure um this is the point where there is a figure that is emer emerging from the shadows of the cave itself uh they begins to take on sort of a silhouetted just creeping forward ahead of the darkness just a little bit um but it's not walking so much as it's slithering and indeed, what comes out of the cave is something you may have seen before by this point. Let me just make sure I'm getting it, move this guy a bit. Uh, it is what seems to be a Gorgon. There's a reason they call him the father of monsters, by the way. <laughs> he has a lot of monsters. Uh, so it's the Gorgon's <laughs> turn, who has used 10 feet of movement to get out of here, uh, which leaves her with 20 feet more of movement. Um, I wanted just to remind you at this point that Roll20 does use the word Medusa for the monster, but by no means is this Medusa. It is just a Gorgon. Um, she will use Petrifying Gaze on you, Pruitt, uh, which is a DC 14 con save, please. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. There's my stats. There they are. Okay. Con. Oh, dang. I don't have great con. <laughs> Oh, thank goodness, 14, exactly. Oh, yeah, that is definitely one you want to succeed on. Yeah. Uh, we'll end the Gorgon's turn. But 
we're not done with snakes yet because the sand here begins to stir and swirl as it begins to like um, sort of tent around something that is um, swimming through the underground, it seems to. And then a head pokes up and then finally whips itself free. There is a giant snake here in the sand as well. So welcome to <laughs> the horrible oh, encounter. Yeah. The horrible you encounter. Monsters? We got monsters. Hosted by... <laughs> Horrible encounters. A giant constrictor snake. Now, keep in mind, not all of these are terribly, terribly strong monsters. This one, however, is going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And it is going to um, constrict you with a 26. Very formidable. <sighs> but roll me a... Um, oh, no, you're just grapple anyway if it hits you. You need to make a escape DC 16. Or you can always attack it, of course. But it does um, 17 bludgeoning damage to you as it wraps itself around you, Athon. All right. And you just see this horrible, scaly, like a giant version of the snake you met earlier, wrap its sort of slick body around you and squeeze hard the air from your lungs first. You can feel it leaving your body. And as you try and take another breath, you just can't raise your diaphragm to take that breath. It's crushing you in its grip, but that'll end its turn. But we're not done with the monsters yet because another thing is flying out of the sky. <laughs> these, these things all rode conjunction. They both got uh, 11, 12, 13, 9, 5, 15 of their initiatives. Um, so... <laughs> This one that comes out of the sky just seems like a person, but with wings. Uh, from a bit away, she looks like a beautiful woman. But as she gets closer and closer, you'll see her face is horribly disfigured and sharpened teeth um, seem to uh, protrude from her mouth in sort of a way that makes it look more like a, a bill of an animal, of a bird. But they are definitely gnashing sharp teeth and a harpy descends uh, into the fray. God. Is Athena here, by the way? Not yet. But who oh, knows? yeah. Shit. Uh, so sh this thing's going to go... Uh, fly 5 10 15 20 25 30 um let's see oh it has 40 fleet of movement that's good so it's going to fly over you pro it to here it's in the sky right now okay. so 20 feet in the air and it will use luring song everyone in 300 feet must make a dc 11 wisdom save or be charmed until the song ends fortunately not the most difficult wisdom save to take i'm pretty sure hero's feast doesn't um buffer against this because it is a oh that's still success, though. <laughs> uh, I'll be like, uh, what's that? Sorry, I can't hear you. <laughs> Natural 20. Very nice. Uh, a 14 and a 13 plus. Oh, Kara. <laughs> Do we get advantage, advantage on wisdom? I have advantage against being charmed. Because okay. You've got so advantage I'm... anyway, wisdom saves. Oh, my God, oh, no. these trolls. <laughs> Yami, do you want to roll again for your advantage? Yeah, yes. You get through your hero's feast. You get it anyway, oh. Yami. Oh, my God. Wow. So, um, TPK. Cara, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Not only are you grappled, but you are um, charmed. And while charmed by the harpy, you are incapacitated and you ignore the songs of other harpies. If the charm target is more than five feet away, away from the harpy, it must move and turn towards the harpy by the most direct, direct route. So, um, so I'm face. So I need to face the harpy and I can't. I'm... You can repeat the saving throw at the end of your turns, and I'll let you repeat the saving throw if you take damage. So that's not, I don't think, in the thing, but I think it makes a lot of sense. So, uh, right, so far we've got, um, I'm going to put pink dot for people who have this. Take Kara's off. Yarling, you also have heard the harpy song as it sits there in the middle of the battlefield. It's up in the sky like a beacon as your eyes just glaze over with sort of pink haze as you look at this beautiful <laughs> creature. That's a 30 foot radius? No. It's um, a 300 foot radius. 300, dang. So, um, everyone within <laughs> a very large distance of it can hear this thing sing out. Uh, but okay, that ends the Harpy's turn. Um, Kara, it's your turn. I take it the other monsters are immune to that. Uh, yeah, this, this, these Damn monsters it. are acting together, so. <laughs> okay. Pretty sure so... they're all just by, the, by, the, by effect immune to charm most of them anyway, so. Hmm. Kara is just looking around the battlefield like. Holy shit, all these animals just came out of nowhere. Some of these you may have never seen before, by the way. They are all hideous creatures that can only be aptly described as monsters. <sighs> all right. And so she is going to... Seeing that the dragon is already taken some damage, makes the most sense to her to try to just get him out of the way. So she's going to call down a moonbeam. All right, sure. Uh, nice. What level would you like to cast it at? Um, that's a good question. 
strong. You got a lot of spell slots to work with, so. Uh, we'll go with third level. Third level, okay. What's the damage on that? Because he's going to roll his con save, which he yes. succeeds. I think, was he succeed? You guys have amazing saves right now. So uh, what's your DC, Kara? Uh, 17. 17, yeah, he succeeds with a 21. So he'll take half damage, and I'll put the moonbeam around. Uh, make it white for thematic effect. Uh, here, is that OK? Boom. Uh, yeah. Cool. So uh, do you want to hand roll the damage? Yes. 40, 10. At fourth level, I rolled a bet. It was third, so three d ten. Oh, it's third. Um, six, 12, 14 damage. Fourteen damage. Is that um, halved, or is that already halved by you? For me? Um, no, it would still be seven damage. Sorry, uh, seven damage he takes. Yep, sure. As it sort of singes off his skin, it looks like um, lighting up his black scales quite a, immaculately, but only getting a little sizzling smoke off them. Not not really making him fuss over it too much. Does that end your turn, though? I'm gonna move a little bit further away from the craziness. Oh, you're moving there. <laughs> okay. Mm. Wanna move there? <laughs> if you want, I will let you move there. And, um. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll just be like, Antigonus, where's your friend Athena? And that'll be the end of my turn. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Not my so. friend. <laughs> um, let me ask a sincere question. Do you guys think I'm out of monsters by this point or? You no. said one rolled a nine on initiative, so that's enough. Ah, that's a very well paid attention, Carl. <laughs> yeah, there's got to be something that, left out there. Said, but, yeah, yeah, you said something rolled a five. And uh, I'm like, mm. Well, the bird rolled the, a five. That might just be rock. the bird. Yeah, the, yeah. The, that's the Caucasian eagle. But something did roll a nine, you're right to say. And um, what what's the first seemed to be a rock sort of unfurls, and all you see is sort of tan colored scales itself as a head just appears out of it, like a giant snake head, and looks at one of you and the other. Um, but what joins it is another snake head, and then another snake head, and then another snake head, and then another snake head, as they all sort of swirl around each other and all hiss in conjunction with one another, a sort of a harmony of deep hisses and soft hisses and light hisses as this thing makes itself known as it tumbles down the cliff. Uh, Hydra, the Linnean Hydra has made itself known on the field, and it will immediately go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 to you, Pruitt. And with its five heads, it will multi-attack, and it can attack as many heads as it has right now. That was okay. just a plastic cup, so I'm I'm getting better at them. Uh, right, so uh, it will go um, 28, uh, 4, no, 28, 11, 15, 14, 15. So only the 28 hits, and I'll use my reaction to have the damage with Uncanny Dodge. All right, sure. Um all right, so uh, you, do you want to retroactively do that, uh, Ethan? What I'm getting in your chat there? Yeah, I was just gonna go over it on my turn. Oh, right, okay, sure. Uh, right, so uh, that is, sorry, 17, eight damage, as you say. Um, all right, so you take eight damage yep. uh, from one of the heads just swiping out to you. You manage to block all the other four off, but this one manages to actually sink its teeth into you, and you do take that seven damage from it, but that ends its turn. It's the rock's turn, and indeed, it will swoop up, um, beat its wings heavily, and then sort of get up around 30 feet high, which is uh, 30 feet of its movement speed. Sorry, well, 10 feet is already t uh, 15 feet in the air. So 15 feet of its movement speed, and it'll go 5, so 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and it will swoop down at you, Pruitt, for uh, then 65 feet of movement with its um, dive bomb on you. And it will make a multi attack, one with its beak, 23. That misses. Oh, the misses. Wow. We've got I have 24 it. AC. <laughs> oh, right, sure. But it will also use talents. Oh, God, it can roll a 31 if it wants to. You know, uh, right. Um, but it, this one is a 16. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but yeah, misses. Yeah. Quick clue to everybody. You do not want to be grappled by a rock. <laughs> it will just murder you. But okay, we'll leave that for when it happens to somebody. That ends the rock's turn. Actually, no. It, well, yeah, it hasn't got a flyby, so it's not going to risk the opportunity oh. to attack it. It'll just sort of hover above you for now. Um, uh, it, it, can it occupy the same space as its hydra friend there? Point, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, it, well, it can. And be, the Medusa. It, it's above them, effectively. So, um, I'm only medium creature. What do you mean? I, I mean, like, if he's a, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, I see what you mean. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. He, he will. He. I'll say he goes here, and he still stays in your uh, effectively area of 
attack without taking his opportunity attack. So, Yarling, it's your turn. So I'm incapacitated. Um, mm-hmm. So I just I I. You can move closer to the harpy. Is that my only choice? Can Pretty I just stay sure. still? Uh, it says you um, uh, to harpy as you know. It says while charmed, a target is incapacitated. It ignores the songs of the other harpies. If the charm target is more than five feet away, it must move on its turn towards the harpy by the most direct route possible. Okay, so that's me, like, here, I think. So you've got 30 feet of movement speed, so yeah, you get to there around. Um, and then I'm just going to redo my save if I can. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Uh, it's only a DC 11. So it's a wisdom, right? Yeah, Still wisdom. advantage, yeah. There we go. <laughs> 15, yeah, you break okay. out of it, unfortunately. Oof. But that is your turn for now. <laughs> Unfortunate. <laughs> I know, that's the pain of just having one CR1 creature in it. <laughs> you can do stuff like that. How painful. Uh, Antigonus, it's your turn. Um, oh, dear God. I am going to cast Banishment at... Jesus, am I really going to try to... Okay. Uh, one, two, three. There's five of these things plus the dragon. I don't love my 8th level spell anyway. I'm going to cast Banishment at 8th level, and I'm going to oh, wow. target one, two, three, four, everything but the dragon. All right, interesting. Uh, uh, right, so one, two, four. I'm making saves for these, I assume. Yeah, the 18, uh, I'll, I'll click it in a second. Uh, <clears throat> Charisma be, save. A lot of these are not from Charisma this plane, save. it could be argued. So I'll say that. Doesn't matter. Banishment, you can send them to any plane. Yeah, uh, is that right? I'm pretty sure you can lock No, it, they go to their home plane. They go to the home plane. Banishment. Yeah, so if, then, if, they, if this is the home plane, I think they're locked or something. You send, you attempt to send it to another plane of existence. Right. Right, but right, so you send them into their own little pocket for a minute. Mm-hmm. And if they're not from here, then they go away forever. Yeah. Okay. After a minute, they come Let's back. make the saves then. What save is it? Wisdom? Charisma. 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 Okay. 18, so. DC 18. Uh, the harpy succeeds. Uh, the constrictor snake. Uh, <laughs> 14. <laughs> Uh, you feel you just drop to the ground, Aethon, uh, as you've been held up by this constricted snake, which means this needs to dissipate um, from things. So if this is its home plane, Shram again, what happens to it? If the target is native to a different plane of existence, you're on target, it's banished. If the spell, does it tell me what happens if it's not native to it? It poofs away for one minute if it's ah, native. Right, there we go. Yeah, yeah, so I'm just going to put this purple dot on them for now. Uh, Medusa, uh, charisma save. She's pretty good at charisma. Five. Yes. She is... Uh, she is there. Uh, the Hydra is not from this plane, so let's hope he succeeds. Or let's hope he fails, for your sake. Um, yes. An eight. Okay, and he couldn't have <laughs> ever survived that, because he's got an 18 minus... His max roll is an 18. <laughs> on his so this thing just sort of lets out a hissing, um, sort of well, if you imagine a very aggressive hissing from the snake, uh, all heads in unison sort of screaming out as it sort of sinks down into the ground, almost as though it's being dragged back down. You see a fiery sort of eclipse uh, take over its body and then it's gone forever. Uh, and then we've got the rock itself. So if you're uh, casting at eight, that's five creatures. Yes. Yeah, but you yeah. wanted to keep the dragon here, right? So um, yeah, the dragon can stay and everything else. Yeah. So right. the rock is purple so they, they're gone for a minute okay all right, all right. so that's exactly uh, what i was about to do zach <laughs> <laughs> all right all right all right so then the only thing left up is this harpy here um i will bonus action um uh, i'm not sure i have anything good actually that i can do if you've already cast a spell you can't spell other than can trip action. Yeah, okay, that's, uh, I will just move away from shit. Uh, I'm going to go, <laughs> I think, over here. All right, I'm done, other than the move. I'm just leaving. All right, have I skipped a turn here by accident? No, I have not. All right, sure. Uh, so it's your turn, Pruitt. What would you like to do? As, uh, these okay. Sort of pop out of existence. I, f- I forget how... Uh... How drawing the lines work, but I'm oh, pretty oh, sure. Oh, oh, it's the Mirbadon. Right? I need to send the Mirbadon to attack them. Oh, yeah. Ah, right. Yeah, that's, that's the one. The other thing. I uh, can't control the token, but I'm gonna send it straight at the harpy. All right. Let's see. What do you want it to do? Just go for one of its normal attacks. Um, yeah, three scimitar attacks. Yeah. All right. Let me grab its stat block. I don't. If the harpy is some twenty feet foot in the air, though. But the Mirbadon was huge. 
Uh, uh, no, he's he's medium creature. Oh, I see. Well, right. if he can't if he can't reach it, then I'll send it to the dragon. Yeah, you can do that instead. Uh, five, ten, fifteen, um, and let's see where is his sheet? Promethean Myrmidon. Uh, you can roll these attacks if you want. You've got access to the character oh, okay, sheet. Right, right. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh... Uh, you just hit the description. Oh, <laughs> <come on. laughs> we get it. You have multi attack, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, nice. All right. Nice. All those. All those hit. Do you want to use fairy strikes as well? Absolutely. Or? Yeah. Absolutely. Each hit that deals an additional five d ten. Okay. So. Well, not five d ten. That would be obnoxious. But uh, each hit. Extra extra one d ten. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> I click in the attack and I won't roll damage. Um, do you want me to do it? Shit. Uh, I'm not sure. It? It's 1d6 plus 4 is what it is. So I'll, I, uh, yeah. I'll ignore mine then. You go ahead and roll. Um, slash roll 1d6. And I'm sure you know already, but if you just press the up arrow, it'll repeat your last roll. Cool. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's and always helpful. Also one a couple of D10s. So, so far we've got 17, 22. Nice. And, and, and more fire right. damage. There you go. That. So uh, he takes 32 fire damage from your uh, from your Mermid on there. Definitely worth having around. Yeah. Um, now I'm going right. to run uh, behind this rock. Okie dokie. Right, so Pruitt, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Hmm, Okay. Um, I I don't remember how to draw the distance arrows, but I'm pretty sure uh, the dragon is less than 50 feet away from me, right? If uh, yes, it is. Yeah, 45. Yeah, so I will dash there. Okay. Harpy's 20 feet in the air, so I guess she doesn't get an top opportunity attack. No, she does not, now. So, and then I will attack the dragon with my action. All right, sure, go ahead. I'm pretty sure that's a hit. There's my stats. There it is. Uh, yeah, 27 to hit. Uh, that is certainly a hit, yeah, definitely. Sneaky, dragon sneak attack, attacky. Bit beaten down this dragon now, but still up and trying to survive. Okay, so 14, 16, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, very nice. Yeah, let's add a wail across the whole valley, echoing, even sending some stones loose, vibrated purely from the cacophonous sound of this dragon's pain cries uh, as it takes a huge amount of piercing damage into its own usually solid hide. This time, definitely a hit. Um, right, so does that end your turn? It does indeed. All right, Herodotus, your turn. Or oh, Merlin, Merlin. Um, I go by many names. Um... <laughs> So if I, I disengage, I can't do anything else, can I? You can use a bonus action. That's what I mean, so I can't cast a spell or anything. Unless you've got a bonus action spell. No. Okay, uh, I'll be like, Archimedes, where are you? And I'll uh, tell him to go and land on um, Antigonus's shoulder. All right. Yeah, which he can do, effectively. And I will Antigonus pass fan. through him an invisibility. Yeah. All right, you're casting invisibility on uh, Antigonus. Yeah, I'm using because I know obviously he's got banishment up. Ah, right. Okay, I see. Very <laughs> smart. Very smart. So nice. um, you That's are awesome. invisible. Uh, very, very good idea. Yeah, very cool. I'm Take sorry, I haven't got invisibility, but I will use greater invisibility. Even okay. better. <laughs> now you can do actions as well while you're invisible. All right, so it's round to the dragon's turn. Which will, in its um, one of its sort of panicking form, just take it. You see its um, sort of bird-like cavity of its huge uh, lungs take a huge suck in as it just vacuums the air into its nostrils, and you see this sort of purplish haze begin to surround its um, its mouth as it opens its huge jaw and lets out a acid breath, oh, sixty-foot line. So where is he doing the line? Let's see. Where's a good place for him to do this line? So I'm going to say, mm, there we go. <laughs> Wait, there we go. Okay, <laughs> right. So Pruitt and Yarling both make me DC 18. Um, dexterity saves. Oh, come on. That hits the Dang. rock. Oh, no, the rock's not there. Oh. No, yeah, you can breathe over that, no problem. 27. Very nice, Yarling, though. Uh, all right, so 
60 points uh, of damage. I'm going to use inspiration. <laughs> All right, sure, go ahead. I mean, I usually like them before I roll the damage roll because I could have rolled really low then and, you know, but, I'll, you know, that's oh. fine. Go ahead. What did you get with your... Uh... So success and because of evasion, I take nothing. All right, fair enough. And you, yelling, take 30 points of acid damage. <laughs> uh, right. I'm so glad that weren't at me. <laughs> uh, right, that will end its turn. Um, the dragon also has to roll the con save for starting his turn in Moonbeam. Nice. Correct. And he will not bother to move away from this. He rolls a 25, Dang. so he'll take half <laughs> damage. Also yeah, so as back. part of his dodge, Pruitt will see the dragon's mouth like bending towards him. Mm -hmm. So he'll just grab the dragon's mouth and just force it just barely above him. Unfortunately, yeah. it still and streaks past and you gets yelling. Uh, <laughs> you get the strange sensation of seeing a dragon cough as you force its mouth shut while it's mid-breath. It just goes... <laughs> <laughs> as you uh, force this breath back down its uh, <laughs> back down its own gullet there but yeah sure uh, is that in your turn yeah. it's the dragon's turn I rolled I was saying it to the dragon I yeah. get a turn. <laughs> <laughs> yes that ends my turn <laughs> 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 alright so it's uh, Sisyphus's turn uh, what, what was the, sorry go ahead the damage sorry um, yeah I rolled 13 so, 13. so it takes 6 there. damage yeah, yeah. Cool, very nice. Yeah, he's looking very beaten up right now. Um, full of sort of the moonbeam striking down on his back, almost flattening him to the ground. Um, but the rest of the damage of him piercing him and slashing him is definitely making him bleed this horrible black oozy blood from his scales. But it is Sisyphus' turn, and true to Sisyphus' style, he will not hold up on the heavy attacks. So he will make two attacks, both 1d20 plus 9. So uh, 1d20 plus 9. For a 20 which hits and a 26 which hits. Oh, what's uh, My boy! He is hitting hard, this guy, and he rolls 3d8 plus 6, so... Uh, ah, 3d8 nice. plus 6... For 21 and 17, so that's... Oh, uh, 38. 28, 38 damage, yeah, which flattens nice. it into the ground. And I'm just going to say that the dragon at this point goes prone, because it's just getting clobbered by this boulder. <laughs> Which I'm going to, it says great club, but it's actually a boulder for Sisyphus. Just <laughs> slamming it down. Great like, boulder. So slams it down on him, lets his hand let it go, and he picks the boulder up again, and he smacks it down, lets it go for a second, claps his hands together, picks it up. It's almost as though he's doing like um, murder ball squats, you know, with this uh, <laughs> with this boulder. Um, he's like a, a pro professional soccer player, just kicking the ball up, and then. Yeah. <laughs> like, have you ever done slam downs with a medicine ball? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what he's. Doing. That's what he's doing on the dragon's back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, that ends uh, martial arts. Turn. <laughs> That's right, Aethon, it's your turn. All right. You should that one done. last turn. You got out of your harpies thing, so. Yep. Uh, thankfully, uh, the constrictor has been poofed out of existence, so he will mm -hmm. get his bearings and sprint over to this fallen column uh, while shooting three Eldritch Blasts at the dragon. Let's All right, sure. Some of those. Yes. Nice. First one hits. Yeah, the one is all I needed. Uh, so as that Eldritch Blast goes out, um, the the shadows fly out of the spear, but they wrap around the back of the dragon and grasp of Hadar pulls him 10 feet towards me. All right, I'll put him down and there. There you go. Yeah, he's just dragged along the ground, leaving out a crater of sand beneath him. Um, he just sort of looks up almost pleadingly for a dragon as it's in the bad strings of its life at this moment. And so as it's being dragged and pulled along the ground, I'll use my bonus action to do one spear attack. All right, sure thing. Unwilling movement doesn't provoke, does it? No, it does nope. not, no. Um, so 32 certainly hits with the 15, which is enough to kill it. So go ahead, tell me how you're going to nice. finish off this dragon. Yep, so <clears throat> the spear goes out and the Eldritch Blast flies, two going wide, but one finding true and just dragging it through the dirt. And as it does and it looks up, uh, there is no mercy on this day from Athon. He'll flip his spear around and just shove it right through the top of the head of this dragon. All right, absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. And it pierces right through the bottom jaw as well, sort of pinning it to the ground. You just hear a heavy release of air in its, uh, in its lungs and the hole that goes limp. Its wings blanket around itself and it's certainly dead. Um, so it is the only creature that is providing a currently hostile threat for the next nine rounds or so. Um, <laughs> so we'll skip over these guys. Car, is there anything you'd like to do? Or is anyone anything you'd like? Anyone anything? Anything anyone would like to do except for um, Antigonus. 
the antigone is you can do stuff as well. You just can't drop that concentration. But the harpy is still around. Yeah, right? I want to fight the harpy. Murder the oh, harpy. Oh, the harpy! Yeah. The, the harpy's still around, and the harpy's got a turn going. I forgot. It skips right over the harpy. Har harpy's only there to do her um, luring song, which she'll try again. Despite the DC being so easy, it worked last time. So go ahead and roll your DC 11 saving throw, everybody. <laughs> Uh, uh, what saving throw what is, is it, it again? Con. Uh, wisdom. Wisdom. Uh, uh, do you know what? Well, I, I, guys, I, just scraping by. And I have advantage, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Everybody yeah. who succeeds is immune to it. Is that right? Is it one of those? Yeah, yeah you're right. Sorry. Oh, sweet. So, All right. I won't bother doing that in that oh. case. It's gonna, um, I was going to say, I rolled a four and a five, but I, that's still okay. like a 12 for me. <laughs> that's true. Um, 13. So it's me. going to multi attack on Galling. Fly down and do a claws at a club for a 13 and a 14. I assume misses. 13 is my AC. Your AC is 13? <laughs> oh my god. You're going to have a hard time. <laughs> uh, you take five slashing and five bludgeoning as it just sort of swoops down and sort of hassles you more than anything else. It's like it swings around you and sort of scratching you and trying to hit you with a bit of wood it's found. It's like a cat <laughs> fight right now. Yeah. It's just like, imagine a bird that's trying to annoy you. This is barely different. Yeah. Just sort of hitting you with its rubbish stick, which breaks when it hits you and take five bludgeoning damage, which at this point is nothing to use. <laughs> All right, that ends uh, the Harpy's turn. Um, so, uh, Kara, it's your turn. I'm going to slide my moonbeam over onto the Harpy. All right, how far can you move it in a turn? 60 feet. 60 feet is more than enough to get to it, yeah. Nice. All right, so slide zoom. Slide to the left. Slide to the left. Zoom to there, so she'll make a con save. Um, oh wait, sorry, it's a Hydra. I'll use the roll. Um, she failed. So 15 oh, damage. Three. All right, nice. Um, yeah, burns her wings, almost one of them off, and she flies around, but she's still flapping around, yarling, screaming at her. It's more annoying than anything else, but, you know, she takes 15 damage, no props. All right, um, is that in your turn? Yep. Rock's turn, he's out of existence. Panda, it's your turn, yarling. Having this... The bird thing just screaming and, and around my face. Mm -hmm. Um I'm gonna just try and hit it with the, the gladius that I got from Pruitt. Alright, sure, go ahead and roll uh, attack with your gladius. So an that 11. Is an eleven to hit? It's a hit, yeah. Okay, and then I'm gonna <laughs> spend I'm gonna expend a bardic inspiration to right. use my psychic blades. <laughs> Um, so an extra 8d6. All right, okay. I don't see it surviving this. Nice. So you want to roll it manual. Oh, uh, yeah, let me see. Oh, here we go. Uh, let me know if that Ooh. does anything. Uh, yeah, the 20 will take. Uh, yep. is enough to is enough to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> Did not last long. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Was that like a Northern English? Shut up, would you? Shut up, would you? Shut the bloody hell up, Yarpy. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, Yarpy. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think turns not in English for a second. <laughs> Shut up, would you? Shut up. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah, definitely kills it. So, well done. Um, yeah, she'll just like, she's just kind of like trying to cover her ears and she just like swings out the gladius to kind of just do something. And I like to think it just takes her head off <laughs> just right, yeah, by absolutely. accident. Just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So it's flapping around you at such speed that you just stick your hand out in a random direction and. <laughs> flies in with its head and it just topples to the ground and it just flops down completely dead yeah this is my first meet it just looks at Pruitt Pruitt I like the sword <laughs> it was a good job for your first time using a sword <laughs> alright um, so with all the other creatures banished I'll say anyone who wants to do anything in 10 or in yeah, I will say rounds. I will call out uh, take us wherever you are um, pick one to let go we'll fight we'll fight that one next First, is that true? Uh, can, you, uh, can you drop them one by one? That is that right? Good question. I do not. I don't know. Like I, I'm pretty sure you can. have to learn to drop the whole spell. You can't yeah. just yeah. let them out one by one. I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna ask Kara yeah. for one of her the fruits. newest unoccupied of that species. Otherwise, it doesn't return. Uh, yeah, you can't do it one by one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's got to be yeah, a yeah. So I, yeah, I yell out. No, yeah. they have to all come back at once. But let's get ready. Oh, uh, you're over there. Go. Oh, Athena uh, had a five round limit to uh, come back, so it's not long before she just uh, runs in from 
like arriving in quite a modal fashion rather not arriving from the sky or in a beam of light she simply runs up from the north where the town was full <laughs> armor now uh, hot flight helmet balanced on the back of her head great spear in one hand and her large sort of medusa head shield in the other uh, i'll put her on the map here and roll her initiative she'll say am i too late for the fight no and uh, we're fighting one of your favorites a gorgon yeah. Yeah, in about 30 seconds, we're going down. Um, uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give Yelling yeah. that fruit. How? What do I? What do I get from it? Um, if you eat it, you get. Athena rolls a six. Uh, five. five d8 plus five healing. So five. Do you want to? How? Uh. <laughs> so five d8 healing plus five. Plus five. How do I forget how you roll in roll twenty now? God. Slash R space, then the roll. And um, Antigonus, do you want to do anything before it comes back with yeah, these? So I'm gonna just scream, uh, uh, Pruitt, go to this side of uh, of Athen. Okay, and I'm gonna prep a. F a f when I drop the spell, I'm gonna sh also unleash a fireball that's going to not hit Pruitt and Athen, but gonna be boxed perfectly. Um, okay. To so hit the rock and the and the Gorgon at the same time. All right. Could, okay. it, could sure. it hit the snake too? The snake's quite far uh, away. I think it's too far. 20 foot radius, isn't it, though? Yeah, it's further away than 20 foot. Oh, it's 20 foot radius. Hmm. Oh, yeah, he can. Yeah, I'm going to aim that huh. sucker right there. Which spell are you using again? Fireball. Fireball, okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, just at third level. So that's, I'm going to stay, you know, hidden behind this rock. And I'm going to aim my fireball for there. And I just sort of say, everyone get ready. 20 seconds. Sure. Um, ready the attack sure. action. But yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, a 20 foot radius is not um, 44 all the way around though. I'm pretty sure that's a one of these, right? From what I've played before. It's not one of these. It, well, it's a fireball. Fireball so a is, a, is a radius, radius, circular radius, not yeah. a square. Radius is half of the circle, so it's 40 feet tall. All oh, right, okay, fair enough. That's 40 feet across. Yeah. I'm going to hide I, behind Sisyphus. Yeah, that's the one. All right, sure. Um, so did you let them out, yeah? Um. Kara uh, would have I'm also ask been the Myrmidon to go over here, and I'm going to ask Sisyphus to go over there too. Well, no, we'll put Sisyphus on the snake. All right, sure. Uh, and Kara would be readying an entangle for the moment that they're back to try to hit. Um, well, now Athena's in the way. Um, <laughs> Move Athena. No, no Athena to go over here. <laughs> Athena, you're always in the way. Um, just to try to hit that. Classic like Athena. <laughs> always in the way. Um, can I uh, prepare an arrow um, aiming towards where the snake will be? Um, yeah, actually, sure. no. Yes, no, I will well, aim towards the snake. At this point, everyone just roll what you want to do because you all just got a ready action. action. Yeah. yeah so, oh, and depending on what you want to do, just roll these things. And I'm rolling some saves, I'm pretty sure, for all of these. So. Um, uh, 24 to hit the snake. The snake is hit, and I'm going to say you take... You know, he's got quite a lot of health, actually. Can't I want to do Bardic Inspiration Psychic Blades again as well. All right, sure. Uh, your Martial Spear Athon, which you're hitting the rock with, or the Medusa? Which one? Uh, I think the rock was flying when it got bamfed no, out, right? Yeah, only uh, a little bit, but you definitely have it with reach anyway, so... Uh, then I'll go for... Actually, I'll go for the Gorgon. The Gorgon, okay. 31 uh, to hit the Gorgon and 34 damage if that hits. Yep, 34 damage to the Gorgon. And then Aethon, yours hits too. So do you want to roll damage? Uh, yeah, 22 for me. 22. All right, yeah, it takes a, a bunch of hits. 34 damage and they need uh, DC 18 deck saves. All right, let's see. DC 18 deck saves. A five is uh, a fail on the rock. Um... A 10, yes. which is a fail. How much damage did you say? It's 34 each. 34 each. Okay, so these two take yeah. 34, and it hits the snake as well, so the snake will make a... Is it dex, did you say? Dex, yeah. Yeah, uh, dex for the snake, too. Five. Also yes! As well. But it kills the snake right out and sizzles into almost non-existence. <laughs> Um, Does it die with my 33 damage on top, or is it already dead before uh, I've incorporated 33 damage on top. I'm seeing 26. Yeah, it was 26 plus 7. The 26 was the psychic blades. The 7 was from the actual bow. Oh, right. Okay. Well, it probably died from your bow then instead. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Get a kill. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> I got two kills now. <laughs> yeah. nice, job. nice job. Mine would be uh, just a, like a lightning jolt on the Gorgon, and that would be 16 damage. 16 damage is it a save or is it an attack no, roll no save yeah i hit um 11 on the dice plus 13. 
All right, yeah, definitely a hit then. Uh, well, it was only oh, 16 crack. damage. Grogan's looking extremely wounded. Uh, so we'll go back to the top of the turn on. Those uh, are I gotta down. roll the Myrmidon against the rock too, but yeah. go ahead, you can do but it. But you will strike. I have so things as well. Effectively, they'll have all turns now because this was yeah. all happened after Antigonus dropped his spell. So there's been a full cycle since that. So they all get to take their turns effectively. Yeah. Um, so we've got a, oh, your Myrmidon as well. Well, well so it drops it. on Antigonus's turn. So it goes for Antigonus's turn, right? Yeah, but didn't Antigonus use his turn to ready an action? Over casting a fire. Right, which is a reaction, but it, it would drop on his turn. I'm going to, just for the time, I'm going to say I'm going to give them both mm -hmm. a turn, given yeah. that they've all been walloped by stuff. Um, you roll for the entangle for them. Oh, sorry. What am I rolling for that? Strength, was strength it? Strength saves. Oh, right, the rock's got strength and spades, but it rolls a natural one and gets 10, even though the plus <laughs> nine modifier is Jesus. still wrapped around by a root. <laughs> um, all right, Medusa. How long, how many rounds have gone? By setting all this up, because obviously my blur and the Greater Invisibility is a minute long. Yeah, he probably still have Greater Invisibility on. Doesn't okay. fade if he uses actions anymore, so he'd still this, probably be invisible. This guy's dead, blur. right? So, um, you've been casting spells there, Herodotus, since then, I'm pretty sure, haven't you? Or? Uh, only a fire a lightning shot. I can I can obviously have two concentration. Oh, trips, yeah. oh you've got two concentration yeah. thing, yep, sure. All right, so that was pretty messy, but we got through it. Uh, and this and guy's the, dead, right? Yeah, he's dead. Okay, uh, good. Sisyphus would hopefully charge up to the rock then, but um, yeah, anyway. on his turn he will uh, continue to attack. So um, I'm going to give the rock a move, and I'm going to give um, Medusa a move. A Gorgon a move. Uh, the Gorgon will multi-attack using um, one snake hair and two with its short sword. So I'm going to do this on you, Athon, north of her. So a 24 with snake hair is a hit for 11 damage, unless you have. Sorry, 13 damage unless you are resistant to poison for any reason. We're immune to poison. Uh, from his, from Hero's Feast, yeah? Hero's Feast. Uh, <laughs> they take four piercing damage. Nice. Uh, right, we'll and she's also going to use her short sword twice for a 7 and a 23. And we're immune to short swords attacks. <laughs> 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 they take seven piercing from that too. So you take a total of 11 damage. Sorry, Aethon, I did try. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, um... That will end their turn. We'll go around to the top of the turn, or then Herodotus, it's your turn. Uh, I'm at the top. Perfect, yeah. Are you? And my thing says... Oh, yeah, I don't know why. I must have skipped yeah, you. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. 18. So go ahead. Yeah, it's your turn. For it. Uh, bonus action, I will incite the rock. You've already done okay. that, haven't you? Oh, I did, didn't I? Yeah. You've done it before, yeah. Yeah, you okay, so I already know how to kill him. Um, have advantage on both of them already from the entangle. Oh, that's right. Nice. Uh -huh. Nice. Well, but just in case, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, okay. So I will take my action to attack the Gorgon then at advantage. Okay. Oh, yeah, I think one of those scimitar attacks would have hit then because of Entangle. Ah, uh, yeah, go ahead and roll that if you want. Okay. Um, so 25 to hit. That is a hit, yeah. Five million damage. <laughs> All right, 1d6 plus... Is that on the rock that you did that, or...? Yeah, it's on the rock. 36 yeah, piercing also, wow. damage to Gorgon. Nice. nice damage. So 9 fire damage. 6 to the Gorgon, which kills it. Nice. Definitely. Do you want to explain how you kill that Gorgon, and also the rock taking 19 damage? Uh... Sure. So... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'll just... Uh, shield bash, stab of the Gorgon in the face. <laughs> and I'll, I'll turn to the party and just say, now we can look. And I'll step over her body towards the rock. All right, sure. Um, right, so Herodotus, your turn. Um, I will... No, sorry, I won't use my blood. Oh, you don't? Okay. okay. Uh, well, I'm guessing the blur would have dropped by now. Uh, maybe. It's only been, uh, let's it... say... I suppose they were in banishment for almost a minute anyway, mm. so... So a couple of rounds left or something? It doesn't really matter from yeah, where I'm standing. Yeah, it'll, it'll be on for a couple more rounds. Yeah, so. um, I yeah. will just do a lightning jolt from where I am. Do I, okay. get, do I get advantage as well if it's entangled at ranged? I'm pretty sure you do. Yeah, it's it's a restrained good. condition. Just yeah, restrained. So. I rolled a natural 18 and a natural 19, so I'm sure one of them hits. Definitely a hit, yeah. Uh, and that is uh, 11... 17 damage. All right, take 17 damage. Okay. I'll just stay Ooh. where I am. 
All oh, right, so it's Athena's turn. <laughs> um, she will step forward and she will ready her spear and she'll say, it's been some time since I've slayed a beast of this magnitude. And she'll make two spear attacks, 28 and a 28. Jesus. <laughs> and she does just stupid damage because she's up there. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so she does almost 100 damage. <laughs> <laughs> So it happens when you have literal gods on your side. So. Yeah, <laughs> 104 is, damage. You, you have saved this party with like surviving. <laughs> the whole fight goes in, taking a Oh sleep. my gosh. <laughs> All right, so uh, that ends Athena's turn. Uh, it is. I feel like she, she did the same thing I did, except on a bigger scale. So. Yeah, most likely, yeah. <laughs> it, is still not, it is not dead, though. Yeah, if you're right about that. Athon, it's your turn. All right, I will take two spear attacks at advantage. All right. You got a hard act to follow, but I like the 29. Go ahead. Uh, it's got advantage three, 18 hits as well. Awesome. So yeah, that's really good though, actually. 35 damage. Nice. It's not that bad for my mere mortal. <laughs> Can I match it? Should I match it? No, I'll save the spell size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can try, I mean, <laughs> it's good. And then he will... Um, just crush this bird's head, most likely. Sisyphus, <laughs> <laughs> holding this. Um, well, Antigonus has built his own party. He's brought three people to this party. <laughs> uh, right. Um, what, where are you? Oh, it's I'm rolling this manual. I want to be twenty to say. Uh, Twenty-one is a hit, and a twelve is a miss. But he will roll that three d six plus eight. Advantage. Three d. Oh, he's got advantage, hasn't he? Uh, roll 1d20. Oh, why am I not just using the up thing? Okay. Uh, 27 hits 2. So, uh, I've lost my stupid Fomorian stat sheet, but I think it's 3d6 plus 8. I'm just going to have to look it up quickly. Regardless, I'll just say it is for now anyway to keep it going. I think it's 3d6 plus 8 on both of those. So, an 18 and a 20 is 38 damage but it's still not enough to kill uh, it 3d8 plus 6 is what you were rolling earlier is it all oh, right okay uh i'll start the stroke keys for it's now fine. So it's, fine. It. it's fine it's fine yeah uh all right so that comes around to your turn kara you know who's gonna kill say. it don't you it's gonna be yarling again <laughs> <laughs> getting closer oh my god i'd love it if i get like three kills in a row <laughs> <laughs> what would you like all to right. kara um kara is like concentrating really hard because I'm using my concentrated mind to keep up my moonbeam still uh -huh. that entangle. So I'm just gonna use my action to move that moonbeam over onto the bird. All right, sure. So he's making a constitution save of 18. That saves. So All right, what uh, damage does he take? So seven damage, I rolled 14. Uh, okay, that is enough to kill him. Woo! <laughs> yeah, 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 five health left. So how, explain to me how this moonbeam cooks this chicken. Oh, <laughs> he's roasted. Yeah. So the moonbeam just kind of slides right over his body. And you can see, like, as the moonbeam's sliding, he just starts to, like, sear. Like, <laughs> slide across until yeah. he's just poof. There is one streak of finely cooked chicken across the whole bird. <laughs> the, the rest is all raw. <laughs> yeah. Then Kara just starts to grow a white goatee and uh, puts on a white suit. And... <laughs> I see. <laughs> I've got to say, at the beginning of this combat, I was crapping myself. I was like, well, we're dead. Yeah, and then yeah. It, it took such a U-turn of, like, we're dead to, like, ha, huh, mate, come Bye. on, let's go. Come on, spells are strong, but how many do you have left, and what's more to come? None, that's it. That's, that's, that's <laughs> my trick. I I, did... I'd say that was worth it. I'm not gonna... I think that my 8th level spells are not very good, so I think that was worth it, but still. I think that was worth it, too. All right, well, the original perception rolls that you failed initially now, I'm going to say, because what's your passive perception? I think it's pretty high, right? Or... 22. 22, yeah. You'd notice uh, there is an old man watching you from this um, this tent here. I'm looking for it. Uh, up here. All right. Yes, right here. Okay. Yep. <laughs> cool. So we're out of combat there now. Yeah. Uh, my invisibility, I assume, fades. Yep. And taking this just like comes back sitting on a rock, eating an apple. <laughs> I don't recognize this man, do I? Uh, roll. Just roll me a simple intelligence check. Very low DC. Just don't whiff it. Uh, Eleven. <laughs> Eleven, some sort of god. 
some sort of very, very important god. Would this oh. happen to be Zeus? <laughs> uh, the white beard and the rippling muscles, given the age of the face and the wisdom, tell you that this may well be Zeus, who has been taking cover under this tent, seemingly in the shade, Shit sitting himself. in front of a rock with his hands clasped together, just watching you, rubbing his hands together slowly, watching you uh, fighting all these monsters. I'll put him on the map. As Athena puts her hand across all of you and raises a shield across all of you, and she says, careful, that is my father. Oh, what a handsome my man. <laughs> like that. Uh, don't like that at all. <clears throat> oh, dear. Uh, You've seen what I can do. He could destroy me in a blink of the eye. Wipes Zeus. dirt off of the face, makes herself look a bit nicer. <laughs> <laughs> I've cast Zeus, is this on how it's going to end? And After um, all you've created? Zeus will just give a small chuckle and I'll say, It's already ended. I have seen to that. What have you done? Hmm. I would have wavered. There would have come a time when I was destroying mortality that you would have appealed to me and am I, in my weakness, in my pride, I would have accepted your surrender. But I am committed to this. So I have taken the decision out of my hand. I have summoned the only one who can do it. And I have surrendered my ability to stop him. Who have you summoned? <laughs> I'm sure by now Athena has told you. And as this says this, there is a huge colossal boom of lava from the top of the Mount Etna that sends scattering sort of showers of meteors across the skyline, each with their own plume of smoke, painting the sky black, heading to different places in the world. They travel like nothing like you've ever seen before. They travel to the skyline, to the horizons, as these things seem to grow more and more in velocity and more in number. Zeus, surely we can talk this through. There must be something you can do. This is why I took it upon myself to do this before you arrived. I am weak. I am susceptible to the emotions of mortals. I would have let you persuade me and then I would have tried to make up for what I have done, but that is why I have committed to this. I but can no longer stop Titan. You can help us, Zeus. Mm. I have given all my power to Typhon. I am now as mortal as you, as you, Athena. You are now much greater than me. Can I? Do can we I believe him? Zeus? Roll an insight check. <laughs> I'm gonna do that too. Well, I've got a passive insight. No, no, I haven't. I've eighteen. So my insight would be uh, twenty, dirty twenty. 20. 22. 22. Zeus is looking a bit feeble. Uh, yeah, with his uh, hands clasped together, he doesn't show the same magnitude. From being around several gods by this point, you've got an aura of gravitas from them, as though being in the very presence seems to plant you in your place, as though rooted to the ground. Um, but Zeus no longer has that. Instead, he's looking a bit more haggard, a bit more um, um, like more like an old man that he would have ever seen before. Zeus... Tell, tell us, tell me how to stop it. Yarling, the way you could stop it is to have accepted me as your lover, but you, you are elusive more than any I've been in the past. I've become something else. Aye, a spoilt little brat. Why I've do you think I've come been... here, Zeus? We if you this. can fix this, then we can be together. Roll a deception check. Okay. <laughs> Surely he hasn't got his godly, like... His godly insight. No, he's not his got divine insight. Like, usually all the gods have the divine insight so they can actually hear lies, but Zeus no longer has that. So. 25. 25. He'll, um, he'll catch his breath and he'll say, this is what it takes. I've chased you across the world. I burn cities to the ground. And this is what it takes to summon the end of the world itself? Not what it takes. I can't lie. I wanted a chase, but I didn't expect this. But it only shows how much you care for me. I cannot stop Titan. 
I made sure I would not be able to, because I know I would falter when I saw you yelling. I know you would be able to talk me out of this. That is why the decision is no longer in my hands. But you can tell us how to stop him. You might not have the power, but we might be able to. When I stopped Typhon, I sent him to Tartarus. And I collapsed upon him a stone to keep him there. And that stone has come to be known as Mount Etna. The only way to stop him is to collapse the mountain on him once again. Do you know a way we could do that? Any supports that a week that we can drop down? Well, perhaps best you go and see Typhon for yourself. If you can force him back down his hole, then perhaps you stand a chance. At this point, Antigonus will finish eating his apple, and he'll just sort of stand up, feeling a little bit bigger than Zeus, strangely disappointed by this entire thing <laughs> as he stares at him. You have learned what it feels like to be us, to have no power, to have fate rolling constantly with no attempt to stop it, no power to fight against it. The same fate that you chained all of us to for all these years. Hmm. Well, I am a mortal too now. I know this feeling well, I feel. Do not feel like I have never suffered disappointment. You, mortals, are my greatest disappointment. But I have seen to that today. Very often the father feels disappointed in the child when the child is ready to take the father's place. Do not lecture me on fathers and children. Firebolt down his throat as he tries to... <laughs> oh, no. And oh. as I'm running forward, I don't know how you want to do this, but I am shooting firebolt after firebolt, just running at him. If you want to use the, if you want to use the spell slots, you can use... Oh, firebolt. I, I yeah, was, yeah, yeah, firebolt. I was going to... Yeah, I ask Antigonus. Well, I mean, this is the thing, right? Because I'm sure that people want to interact with Zeus, but if Antigonus, you want to do this uncontested, that's fine. But you can contest if you want, Yarling. It's got to be imaginative of how. Uh, Yarling, probably this whole time, like, she's been slowly approaching Zeus. Mm -hmm. um, and as Antigonus is, like, lecturing him, um, she just probably, if he, if he lets her, she probably just, like, strokes his hair back, puts her hand on his face and as soon as Antigonus starts to fire she's probably gonna uh join in and poison spray him oh right i thought you were to save him uh, <laughs> no oh. who do you think <laughs> i'd save zeus me just want the killing blow i thought you were like no don't kill him no i, I wanted to be <laughs> the woman. killing blow i Goodness wanted to be the woman who destroys zeus all right sure um but as soon as Antigonus like fires Mm -hmm. She's probably just going to join, so I imagine they it's probably unclear. hit at the same time. It's unclear what is the final uh, of Zeus. Um, the poison spray sort of fills his lungs straight from your wrist or wherever it you know comes from, um, straight down his throat. And just, his eyes glaze over. It seems as though he's ready to accept this, and there's almost a sort of a sigh of relief that leaves his uh, lungs, he's finally embracing what he's never known for mortality. Um, it's a very peaceful scene as he sort of drifts off in your arms and then a fireball hits him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to hit him with a level weight disintegrate, but... Bursts uh... <laughs> into flames and his head's on fire. And he's not dead. And what turns into a somber, peaceful scene, you just hear him screaming. Like... <laughs> I'm going to stamp on him. <laughs> right, do so you want like we on him or anything? Just like, you know... Really, <laughs> you know it's, yes! Oh, uh, <laughs> I like to think I'm wearing. I like go. to think I'm, I'm wearing some go. sort of shoe with a heel, and it's just Could our giant friend eye. just drop the boulder. On him? <laughs> <laughs> you want him to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sisyphus will come over and he'll just drop his boulder on him, and his feet are sticking out, and he'll pick it up, and it's just a squash of Zeus underneath, <laughs> with a burning beard and a poisoned face. And, um, <laughs> Sisyphus will look across and I think we got him. He will travel down to the underworld, and Hades will decide his fate. If he has his godly powers back, perhaps he will change his mind. This was all part of my plan. But that felt really fucking good. <laughs> oh, oh, like... I'm sorry, Athena, dear. Mm, she says, it. well, perhaps for the best. I assume Typhon had a reason for leaving him alive. No mortal stands in the way of Typhon. But... Whatever reason that was, who knows? 
We need to destroy the rock. We need to collapse it down on him. I was there when Zeus defeated Typhon. If you can force him back into the mountain, and perhaps force the mountain back over to him, it is a magic seal. Perhaps we can keep him back down there before he musters the strength to escape the mountain itself. Lead the way. And she'll um, she'll approach this tunnel and she'll say, "It is up here, many steps to the to the peak, and there we will meet the father of monsters himself, Typhon." I'll He's... grab my. Sorry, go. On. Just... No, go ahead. What do you want to grab? I was just going to say I, I'll grab my mini dagger that I'm not going to try and pronounce the name of, and I'm going to cut off a bit of Zeus's beard. All right, sure. <laughs> yeah. um, Sisyphus will come over to the entrance to the cave here and I'll say uh, bit of a problem here I can't quite get in this hole I, I'll try and climb and meet you but it, it may be some time but luckily for me walking up hills is what I'm good at <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> Plus he's pulled it out he just missed it he just like really wanted to do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah he just really wants to walk up this jonesing for a, for a mountain <laughs> Why? <laughs> Puts this boulder down and starts rolling it up the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Expert skill. Well, right. Why am I go. going with you? <laughs> <It's laughs> no one noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Just over the shoulder, you're coming with me. I will slam the first flame on the ground and summon, summon a second Myr Myrmidon. Oh, have you done 100 fire second. damage? Yes. All oh, right, nice. So you get another moment on, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, but before you face the father of monsters, the most fearsome threat, what embodies doom and entropy in all of Greek mythology, it's probably best that we take a break. Yeah. Okay, right. So welcome <laughs> back, everybody. Lawful Stupid RPG Pantheon campaign. Final session of the campaign with the players going up against, well, who they expected to be Zeus, but they found Zeus at the bottom of the mountain amongst um, several of the monsters that Typhon has summoned. Um... And he has explained to them how he has surrendered his power. He's taken the decision away from him himself to turn back on his decision to end the world and instead given all authority over to somebody who knows will not falter in that task. Uh, the players are marching up a torched lit set of stairs through the mountain. <laughs> Upwards and upwards, goes up some thousand steps and spirals round in some situations. Sometimes you come into rooms which are um, hopping, swampy-like with frogs all sort of sloshing your feet against sort of fetid, um, stagnant water. Some are filled with snakes, but none of them seem to bother you. Rather, they sort of veer away from you as though your presence is um, anti-magnetizing them, sort of pushing them away. and They let you through to the next set of stairs going up and up and up. And Athena will look over her shoulder to each of you, uh, who's um, sort of the only god with you now, I suppose. Um, and she'll say, this is the effect of Typhon. He sends animals crazy, summons venomous frogs, snakes, insects from all regions. They are, they are drawn to him. Watch yourselves. Do not get bitten by anything. Okay. Fire Although ball, I know, fireball. fireball. <laughs> yeah, you, you can start fireballing. Effectively, it's just the effect of actually fireballing actual real <laughs> insects, which is they just explode and they all scatter away. And, um, but yeah, it's not long before you um, come to precipice. You can see the sort of horizon at the top of the staircase where the large plume of smoke is rising into the sky. And every once in a while, you hear a colossal bang as another meteor of lava is thrown from the top of Mount Etna to some far distant place in the earth, somewhere the Typhon is already wreaking havoc as these huge things, almost the size of elephants, these large balls of lava fly across the sky, painting it a sort of a spider of blackness across it, several strands in different directions. Um, so uh, Herodotus, I had a question for you. Uh, did you ever figure out what this does? And I'm going to hold up the helmet of Ares. <laughs> 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 did you ever figure it out? I'm not sure. Probably not. Roll me an off. No, he did. He did identify. You just he said you were going to come back with yeah. the stuff later. Sure. I, I was going to say something like it did a petrifying gaze, and I thought it was a bit too strong. So yeah. I'm saying now that it will give you a plus three to wisdom saves. That's okay. Fair. It's probably something you could have known, and it's more of a pathfinder thing to have pluses to saves. But uh, it has. It gives you a plus three to wisdom saves. I'll say that. Is Pro wearing it, or is somebody else wearing it? It's up to you. I don't know who's got it. I don't need it. Uh, you dealt the blow. Go for it. Yeah. 
I already have plus seven, so if anybody else wants it, okay. you got a plus ten. Baby. I have I have plus two to wisdom saves. Uh, I got a minus one. Don't worry about it, man. <laughs> minus one to wisdom saves. <laughs> no. give it, give it I know what I'm going for in this <laughs> next. Okay, yeah, it goes it goes to it goes to Aethon. I think Pruitt has his uh, attunement already capped anyway. Okay, but um, well. Pruitt will take a potion of heroism. All right, as sure. will on. All right, yeah, sure. You've got the potion. I take the potion of flying. I'll take right. fire resistance, um, and I'm going to go over to Herodotus when he comes back. <laughs> uh, fire resistance just means it's half damage, right? Uh, yes, you've got okay. resistance to fire. All right, sweet. All I, right. Um, I also reach into my bag, pull out some wet clay. I take Kara by the hand, look her in the eye. I don't say anything, but I just draw a weird little symbol on her forehead and cast Death Ward. Ah, oh, Death Ward, that's a nice spell. Is it concentration? No. Okay, cool. Yeah, Kari, you're warded against death. Until um, the spell runs out. I'll go over to Herodotus and uh, out of her bag, that is like she's rummaging for a while, she'll pull out the drawing that Herodotus did uh, within like the first few days of them meeting, the ones he kept like scrumpling up and throwing away. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, his mic's not working. Is it not? Your mic's gone. Uh, that's a bit of a pain. All right, uh, you're going to have to type quick for what we want. <laughs> it's overwhelmed in emotion. Is <laughs> <laughs> it just up and given up? Or? I don't know why I'm asking you questions and not looking at the screen. Let me, <laughs> it's, like, it's just given up, has it? Yeah, we can't hear you. Yeah. All right, well, uh, you type what you want. Or just, or just link the spell. Or, you know, uh, yeah. do the damage for the time being. Or if you want to say anything particularly poignant or do anything, just type it as quick as possible. Is that okay for the time being? All right, let's hope it kicks back into uh, working order. But, yeah, um, indeed, uh, without sort of metagaming at all, say this is the final fight, guys. This is it. <laughs> you know, th- so is there anything else you want to do in character be to- beyond each other? Uh, I'd say do it now because I'm not sure who's going to live through this. I'm basically echoing Athena's sentiment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I already took the potion of speed, the battle yeah, before. That's gone, unfortunately. Who has the healing potions? Athon's drank one, I think. Yeah. Drink one of the superiors. To drink them is a. Uh, action or bonus, bonus action? Bonus action. I do bonus actions for these. What does okay. heroism do? They mean to fear. I think. We already took both of them, Aethon and I. Oh, okay. Um, I'll take... Um, if no one else will, it's going to take one. I'll, um, so I've already got fire resistance. I'll take uh, flying if no one else will. But if not, I don't mind not having... I've already it. got fire fire resistance too, so... Uh, okay, else. so that's all the fire resistance. No, no, no I, um, didn't take, I didn't I don't have to drink. I have my armor has fire resistance, so... Oh, else. right. Um, if I, I'm kind of the tank, so does anybody mind if I also take fire resistance? That's fine. Do it. Go yeah. for it. I also have evasion, so maybe it's not worth it. But yeah, okay. I'll take fire resistance and I'll pocket a supreme healing. I will also give everybody a piece of fruit from nice. the cornucopia. Yep. Yeah, they're very good, those things. Okay. All right. So uh, with that, I'll, uh, we'll... I'll, mm-hmm. I was just going to say, I'd, uh, I'd just like kind of. She's just kind of gonna like prepare everything, straighten it out, and she'll just look at the party and just thank you all for everything. <laughs> I don't want to do anything too serious because I do. I, I I'm gonna be positive for the first time in a long time. Um, but uh, thank you all for helping me, especially with uh, Larkin. I don't know what I would have done without you all and not many people trust people like me so the fact that I was taken in by you it felt like I had the second family so I uh just don't die out there okay I can't promise that we won't die but it's a good story maybe someone will listen to it one day <laughs> very well we're mortals <clears throat> Um, as we get to the very top, right before the battle begins, I'm going to cast a bless, and I'm going to I'm going to give it to uh, Kara, uh, Herodotus, and Pruitt. Right. I don't need it because I have drank the potion of heroism. Oh, that's right. So, so Kara, Herodotus, and Yaling will get uh, Kara, Herodotus, and Yaling will get the bless. Yeah. All right. Don't know how how long I'll keep it up, but that's like right before the battle starts. I'll do that. 
Okay, let me just put this little blue dot on the people who've got it. Cara Herodotus Yaling. And who's drank the potions of heroism? Athan and I. Okay. That uh, lasts for one hour, no concentration. Yeah. So. Athan and Pruitt have those. I took fire resistance and flying. All right. So I'm also fire resistance. Flying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Athena. Um, okay. <laughs> he said he needs to restart the stream. Oh, right. Okay. So we may need to just take a quick pause before. Yeah, let's we take a quick break then before battle. we start the final battle. Sure. Whenever you're Don't ready. Don't go then. anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> battle with Typhon for the end of the world. <laughs> for the end of the world. Welcome back, everybody, to the final battle. The battle which will determine the fate of all mortality and immortality. No one is spared from Typhon's wrath. Um, Athena places her foot upon the final stair. Um, she looks back one more time and says, Well, I'll see you all on the other side. It's been an honor, despite what I feel about your uh, brothers, sisters, and others. I, you are one of the rare good ones. And if we manage to make it way our way through this, I will do the same as Zeus. Surrender my powers. I cannot say the same for all my brothers and sisters, but you have my word. Well, we may need your help convincing them, but that's a conversation for another time. First, we need a world to be there. That's true. <laughs> well, I can't say. It's been some time since I've been last scared, but here we go. <laughs> for mortality. And for mortality. Others. <laughs> and, uh, and others. She takes a step forward and um, she lets herself into the sort of bright daytime air of the uh, top of Mount uh, Mount Etna, which currently is seemingly um, the smoke rises very quickly. So there is a very distinct and solid plume of smoke from a central hole in the center of the peak. Is anyone else going up or? I'll fly yeah. up and look. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So some of you fly up, so some fly. of you, um, some of you step up and I'll just put you on this map here. As the actual um, the actual surrounding of Etna seems to be been warped by the presence of great evil, it seems as spikes ero like sort of erupt from the stone surroundings. Um, the, the whole mountain seems to take on a jagged, very inhospitable, hostile terrain around it. As these horrible sort of spiked teeth-like um, stone erupt from every possible cliff, cliff face. Uh, and in the center where this um, stone arch is, which maybe is not exactly what should be there now, but um, no, let me get rid of that stone arch actually quickly. There is a <laughs> hole there, and uh, there, from this hole you do see emerging from it the colossal form of two giant uh, feathered wings accompanied by a large beard of pure red hair, uh, among which, above of which rather, with sort of long streaking greased horrible um unkempt locks uh from behind which peer two burning orbs of fire uh that stare down at each of you but at the same time at all of you all of it just seems that typhon's gaze watches you as you uh, ascend this um staircase before him um there is no sign of any of anyone else here as he just stands there with his arms raised and what seems to be his waist descends into a collection of horrible um not snakes, but the head of each snake is a different type of animal. You hear the roar of a lion, the hiss of a snake, the bleating of a goat, all different kinds of sounds. Indeed, a babel of different horrible screaming siren voices that sort of all join together with horrible roars, all only eclipsed by Typhon's own words. As he just says, welcome to the apocalypse. I'll say I'll deal with the goat. <laughs> Let me, yeah, put, I'll, put him on, I'll put him on the map how about that Typhon this was a trap by Zeus get down quickly <laughs> roll deception <laughs> <laughs> you've, got, you said, you've got bless yeah, as well 20, nah, 20. <laughs> Please be but yeah I, he will actually go into his whole sort of speech thing so he'll uh, look down at each one of you um, yeah a deception 13 surprise you've got, you got a bless on that uh, oh yeah, roll the bus one d four. We'll definitely get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. 
he looks at each one of you and says, Yes, muster your courage, your might, your hope. Muster all that makes you mortal and bring it to me so that I may snuff it out. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Antigonus. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, with that, he will um, raise his arms high and the flames around him erupt, erupt in a crescendo around him, swirling, painting him with um, fire as he looks down at each one of you and he just casts his hand across all of you and he'll say, I am unreason. I am discord. I am inconsolable. My being is the twilight of your existence. And with that, he will roll initiative. Oh dear. On, on Typhon. I respond, you are temporary. <laughs> you will go back to the twilight. And he rolled a six. So he goes on a six. <laughs> Not great for Typhon. But okay. Um, so I just need one from Kara. What did you get? 13. Can you give me control of the Myrmidon tokens, Harry? Uh, it's very difficult for me to do. It'll take me like 10 minutes. Oh, <laughs> I'm just okay, gonna, right. If it's okay for now, I'll just, you just point where you okay. want. I just want them to be like in a line in front of me right now. There you go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I've got Aethon, Herodotus, uh, Yaling, Antigonus. And what did you get, Kara, one more time? Sorry. 13. 13. Okay. And Athena will uh, roll hers. We'll just send Athena in and we'll just sit back and wait. <laughs> you can try that if you want. <laughs> um, we got to keep Athena alive. She does 100 damage around. <laughs> so, I mean, we'll just let her take care of him first. Is Sisyphus around? Uh, he's not up here yet. Okay. <laughs> so what Once get? the rock drops Eight. down, we'll know that he's coming. <laughs> All right. Cool. Yeah. So, with that, uh, Yarling, it is you facing what very, may, very well may be a world of chaos if you fail, a world of Titan. If I okay, all right. Um, you should go and hit him with that sword. <laughs> um, Seduce him. I'm mm, hey, Typhon. hey, um, music. What's up? Yeah. Nice. Um, God, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm, you know what? I'm gonna try and hit him with a force cage. A force cage, okay, very well. Is that a save for me? Uh, Yes, it is. Charisma no, 18 save. Cool. Nah, That's yeah. only if he, on his turn, if he wants to get out. That's when he wants to get out. He doesn't get. Oh. A... Mm, so he throws it at the start of his turn, right? So. Uh, yes. Oh, maybe. Mm. If he's if, any time he's trying to get out, and it has to be magically, then he rolls the save. But right yeah. now he's just trapped. No save. All right. No probs. Uh, okay. So does that end your turn, Yelling? Uh. Yeah. We'll say that he, it doesn't work if he's bigger than 20 feet. No, no, it does work. It's a very strange sight. Uh, Yarling, your sort of shadow-esque magic sort of envelops him, and the fires are contained within. And what you're looking at is effectively a ball of flame as the fires batter against the side of the force cage, obscuring the Titan within. Nice. Is it in, There's a hole, right? Uh, beneath him, yeah, his body descends into the earth, and his body is of snakes. From the waist down, there are no legs, just hundreds upon hundreds of um, serpentine bodies that seem to spray down, some of which snap around and protrude from the hole itself. So does he fall down the thing with the, and he's in a cage? <laughs> no, it seems like he's quite stable here where he is. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> the, fa the cage actually extends all the way down to wherever his bottom is. Oh, okay. I see. I see. You're trapping him in the cage, so... Uh, I'm sorry, he scared me. I don't. <laughs> uh, yelling just it's like quite fine. There, like shaking. Warm up. All right, sure. Does that end your turn, yelling? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Kara, it's your turn. Okay, I need to understand this hole. <laughs> 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 is that actually is that, is yes. that Kara in character? <laughs> yeah, it's just yes. it's like a tie now. I need to know what's going on. <laughs> you know? Uh, no, because it's going to impact what spell I choose. So I, I need a kind of a better visual of what what where's the bottom? What is the bottom? What how big is this? Like what does it look like? Go and take a look over the edge if you wish. It goes nine days down. Effectively. 
<laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, I'm going to do a quick scribble on the map here. Freehand. Uh, Yaling, is this a solid box or a cage with gaps? Because you get to choose. It depends on his size, I think. This is R the right. Hole. He's not going to be able to get out either way. But the thing is, can stuff pass through it between bars? Maybe his attacks, maybe not. Or is it just solid? Okay, so a cage can be up to 20 feet. The box well, is we, we already established that it's enveloping him. You just get to choose if it's a solid flat surface or if it's caged bars. Uh, caged bars then, probably. Okay, so he can still Nothing, be attacked. He, 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 can't, he can't get out, basically. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. one inch diameter. They're half an inch diameter apart. So if he has an appendage that's that small, then he could attack through it. Mm -hmm. I okay. thought he, has, he can't actually, like, le anything leave the cage. What would you like to do, Clara? I mean, I, 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 can you make your decision with, um, without this, or do you need this in for now, Clara, to make one? Um, Effectively, he's in... What? Imagine steel bars around him. Yeah, how much of the cage is sticking out then? Like, oh my, I, I love force cage. <laughs> okay. I'm Let's... sorry, I have a lot of like moldy earth type spells, so I'm I... trying to understand yeah, sure. my sure. options here. Um, well, I'm going to say that if you mold earth inwards, it won't go through the cage because its idea is it keeps things out. Right. Yeah. It's small enough to get through those bars. It wouldn't be of any nuisance to the Typhon anyway. So, um, does that help at all? Or? Not really. I okay. don't know. Uh, uh, why don't you tell me exactly what you could want to do, and then we'll see if it works. Well, I don't know what I want to do. It's fine. Um, Are you trying to make the hole bigger so he falls through it? Well, that's what I'm trying to understand. If I can do something underneath to make him sink, perhaps? Or... Well, you can try. You, you're you not close enough to see the exact physics of this hole yet, so... You see where you are? Yeah, I mean, my range of my spell is 120 feet, though. Yeah, but I'm, <laughs> if you want to just understand more about this hole, you're going to have to get closer and look down yeah. it. No, no. <laughs> okay. um, I'm good, then, because I can't hit him. So You don't want to do anything? Or? I, I got nothing. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, I'll use my bonus action to cast Shillelagh, just so I've got it. All right, sure, you got Shillelagh. No problem. All right, um, it's your turn, Merlin. What would you like to do? Um, He will look above. And then uh, get his hand and then come down on top and a massive hand or force will appear above the cage and start pushing the cage and him and trying to force him down. Can you push a force, get a force cage? I don't know. I don't think so. Literally the first oh, two yeah. words and immobile. Yeah, immobile. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I and I was wrong about stuff being able to pass through to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Third paragraph there. Well, would I know that? Well, as, well, I would know that. Yeah, you can try it. I, I would mean, know. I've got, I've got Force Cage. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. So I can't. I am going to cast Fly on myself. All right. Sure. Do you want yeah. to do anything as a bonus action? No. She's right. just going to hold it, being like, prepare your spells. I, uh, he, I hope he wastes his. All right. Yeah. Well, strangely enough, seems happy to let himself go in a Force Cage. All right, Aethon, it's your turn. All right, even through the magic of the Hero's Feast and the Potion of Heroism, uh, Athon can feel his heart beating. He knows this is probably the last day for most of us, um, but he will step forward, and as he brings his Shadow Spear, he'll strike it against this rock that kind of goes around, and he'll pray to himself, Nix, if you have anything left, this is the time. And uh, a wall of night, uh, which is a wall of fire uh, flavored, will okay. come around the back of this um, kind of enclosure here. All right, so let me see if I correct in seeing where this is. If I put this like here, oops, hang on. Why yeah, and if we can kind of like bend it around a, a little bit, if we can, but yeah, it's sure. like a hundred feet long or something. Yeah, I don't know why my thing's just gone off. There we go. Uh, so blah 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 blah. Like, is that would that be? Yeah, that, that's what I was going for. Yeah, I know it's damage not... on the inside. Ooh, yeah, can't affect him yet, but sure, I'll just say that it's all around, and that's fine. Definitely there. Um, so damage on the inside, so he'll take this damage because he's within 10 feet of it if, when, when the force cage fails or ends. Yep, that's my turn. All right, so Antigonus, it's your turn. As this guy now has more flames around him. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, I will send the Myrmidons. Uh, they have 40 feet of movement, so they will get in position roughly, you know, here. Oh, okay. Thing. Yeah, roughly there. Okay. There. Yep. All right. Uh, and they will hold their action to uh, strike him once the force cage drops. 
Okay. And then I will fly a little bit over here. It's the same as my movement speed. Um, and then I will cast... Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. What did I want to do? I wanted to cast uh, Erupting Earth. So I'm going to try to make the ground around him start collapsing even more. Uh, becomes difficult terrain um, in a 20-foot square. And I'm going to aim it over in uh, this direction here. All right, okay. I see what you're doing. Yeah, sure. Uh, the earth does begin to rumble around him. He stables himself on the side with his hands as he still up to the knees. He begins to flap his wings. Okay. And but he's still, like, still caught in the force cage, of course. Which is a very, very tight fit for him, but yeah. That's, that's my turn. All right, so it's your turn then, uh, Pruitt. Um, yeah, I'll run up to him. Um, my action will be to ready an attack as soon as I'm able to hit him. Okay. And uh, my bonus action will be to fly into a rage. All right, sure. Um, so your bonus action, you've gone into your rage. You're in mm -hmm. werewolf form, of course, and um, yes, you're ready your action to hit him, sure, when this force cage drops. Uh, Athena will do very much the same, I think. She'll just ready your action to hit him. Can, can she get there in time? Hang on. Uh, 30 feet of movement. She can't quite reach him, but she's got a spear which is reached, so she'll be able to do the same. Um, all right, that ends Athena's turn. So it is now Typhon's turn. Uh, as he casts his hand across the um, across the battlefield, he will use his his um, his action, Minions of Tartarus, um, and he will say, Witness the dusk of your existence. And if, it's, roll... if it's magic, he can't do it, I don't think. It would yeah, be magic. can't pass through the cage. It's, yeah, he can't yeah, pass that's through fair it. Fair enough. Okay. Well, that's that fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of his minions being summoned on the inside by accident, yeah. squishing him. <laughs> All right. So let's see what he can do. Okay. He, he, I guess what he'll do is he'll ready in action. <laughs> well, all right. It's your turn. Uh, yelling. <laughs> Just like holding it like. Do I drop it? <laughs> well, while this is happening, of course, there is more meteors and sort of lava exploding from parts of the mountain that have begun to collapse into Tartarus. Uh, she's just got to, like, and, and drop it and just kind of, like, visibly, like, she's white, like, just completely, like, doesn't know what to do. Sure, sure. All right, so you drop at the force gauge. Dropping concentration isn't an action, so you still oh, have Oh, okay, turn. so it's not an action, right. No. Um, Oops, I... <laughs> we killed time. <Typhon. laughs> we did it! <laughs> Yay. Easy. I'm just going to delete a few of these then, because he's hard to... I'll put him over here. <gasps> Natural 20! Ah! <laughs> All right, on damage, yeah? On an attack roll? Yeah, All right, am I nice. ready to attack? All right, so you go ahead and roll, start rolling those bricks. It's going to take some time to get through all his dice. <laughs> oh, um, come on. Five ones. In the oh, no. Pool. That's painful. I am going to summon um, Morden Kanan's Faithful Hound. Okay. Um, and I'm going to... I don't know how... I can summon it in 30 feet distance, so I'm going to summon it as close to him as I can, so the doggo will be about here-ish. All right, sure. Um, and we'll... Uh, at the start of my turn, so I think it's next round, he does 4d8 damage onto it. All right, um, sure. So I'll uh, do that. Say again where it is, sorry. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put a token down for it. Uh, basically right It here. will be about here-ish. Okay, I don't have a hound, so I'll put this, uh, this friendly-looking fella on. There you ah, go. what a good boy. Best boy. <laughs> um... And then chuck a bardic inspiration towards Pruitt. All right, sure. I did 75 with the crit damage, Good which is God. actually really low. The average would have been 98. All right, yeah, sure. You I rolled it. tons of ones. Um, I you... rolled all the Myrmidon attacks. I don't know if they. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. How, how much? They didn't do anything, did they not? Or they were holding their actions i, I, I none, of, none of those would hit sorry yeah wow that, i rolled <laughs> so badly yeah unfortunate <laughs> unfortunate uh does anyone else have a ready action against him i think that was it right or so he will use his ready action which will come as no surprise it's still the minions of tartarus um <laughs> uh, he would have spawned into my my wall of night so deck save from him oh probably. yeah deck save from sure 
Uh, he rolls a 20. So he does save. So he'll take okay. 14 cold damage. 14 cold wise. damage. Yep, sure. That's absolutely fine. Uh, and he will roll a 1d7 for his move. Uh, and Athena had a ready action. Oh, that's indeed she did, yeah. Athena's radiant damage, however, does not affect him because she cannot affect another god, divine being. But she can do it with her normal, her normal blunt mundane damage, which is 14 and a 30, because they both hit with a 23 and a 32. So she does 30 points of damage to him. Okay, so he's rolled a 6 on his 1d7, which is pretty good for him as the ground to the northwest begins to crumble down into Tartarus and a large hole appears there. And from that hole, a spined sort of scaly claw emerges and a large set of wings come too. And you've got to say hello to your friend again, the Lydian dragon. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, jeez. Who will roll his own initiative. Which is a 1d20 plus 2, I believe. You got a 10. Okay. That's a turn order for a 10. Which will end his ready to action, thankfully. Uh, and now it is your turn. Um, Kara. Okay. Seeing that dragon pop up out of the ground, I'm assuming he's still on the ground. Yeah, he won't have taken off yet. Okay, I'm going to um, just reach out and cast Entangle. On the dragon? On the dragon, yes. Okay, that's uh, so a strength save for the dragon, which he rolls a 15. Yes. That is a failure, so he is restrained. Very nice. <laughs> I'll just do nice. this little chained heart thing. Yeah, so the dragon's restrained as the roots begin to sort of crawl out of this a very dusty terrain, but very arid, dry roots manage to wrap around the dragon's feet before he manages to flap his wings trying to take off, but he is restrained to the ground. And um, that'll be it for me. All right. Uh, it is your turn then, um, Her Merlin. You see Merlin now. Hmm. Well, I'm about 30 foot in the air at the moment. Okay. So I will. I will do my original plan of Bigby's hand, put it above Matey. All right. And it'll be a, 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 well, it's a DC 20. It's a strength save. So DC 28 for me. DC 28? Uh, hang on for me. Hang on one second. Uh, what level is it? He rolled a 20 on his strength save just soon. Your DC is going to be the same no matter what level it is. Yeah, well, the thing is, it's weird because you can cast it's like it a grapple. Levels. It's like a grapple spell. Um, yeah. use, be right, the DC strength. is usually still the same? Unless it's... it's I think if you have to, he has to roll an athletics check for Big B's... Well, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm trying to do... It. Um, wait, let, wait, let, hang on a minute, hang on. Let me just do that first. So I've, I've got to do the strength save thing, haven't I? So that... I'm trying to force him down, so yeah, he passed. All right, sure, with a 20 on his strength save. Yeah, mine was only 12. All oh, right, okay, sure. Uh, but he takes the damage, of course. Uh, I of no, 10. I think I have to pick, don't I? Um, I, You've got to remind me of Big Beast's hand. It's not the most usual spell. So, so you've got, actually got to make an athletics check with the hand. It's not a DC. Yeah. Yeah, so I, so, yeah, I just did that at 12. All right, is oh, it is that what that was? Oh, yeah. Dang. So concentration up for one minute. Uh, your concentration on flying, though, is that your second concentration yep. then? Yep. All right, sure. So I'll put this. Uh, I'll put this square. And I'll fly over to here. I'll put this square where that big beast hand is. And is that end your turn? Uh, yeah. All right. So he will use his legendary action, uh, a simple one, just to lash out at you, Pruitt, straight ahead of him, yep. with one yep. of his snake yep. tails, just peeks up and <laughs> swings around to try and hit you. Uh, 36. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty pretty un unavoidable, that one. As it just swings around the hallway, and from the side, you feel 35 damage. As 25, which is necrotic. The 25 is halved, because I am a raging. That's true. Yeah, sure. So 12 plus 10. 22, total. 22, yeah. 22 total damage. Um, all right, uh, which that is his legendary action for that turn. Um, brings it round to you, Aethon. All right, uh, we're gonna send three Eldritch Blasts, two at the dragon, one at Typhon. Okay. Uh, so are these in order, two at the dragon and one at Typhon at the end? Uh, yep. All right, so they all hit. 
So this is 16 damage to the dragon and 18 damage to Titan. Very nice. All right. So the the spears of uh, dark force fly out, uh, and as it does, I don't know if grasp of Hadar will work on this big fella. I doubt it. Um, but as it hits, uh, I will take the bonus action uh, martial spear attack. Okay, sure. Uh, you can definitely do the martial spear attack bonus, but the as you say, the grasp of Hadar just would not work on him. Twenty four yeah. is a hit though. Very nice. 16. For another 16 damage. Yeah, sings damage. Also, nice. we don't want to pull him out of the pit. So, <laughs> uh, Well, I mean, if he's back. unconscious, we can just put him back in there. It's no worry. <laughs> Wish we'll be <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, he'll take another legendary action there, of course. Uh, this time he's going to do a gaze at you, Pruitt. Okay. Which yeah, one? a bit of a pain one. Uh, he's going to do a hypnotic gaze. So which save is that? DT 23 wisdom. So I was wearing the helmet, right? <laughs> yeah, you get plus three to whatever we roll. You've got advantage as well. Oh yeah, that's right. I get advantage. That's good. Um, and plus the bless. Oh, I matched it. And I'm not wearing the helmet, by the way. Aethon was wearing the helmet. Oh, Aethon's wearing the helmet. So, oh, you got so I rolled a 12 plus seven, plus four for bless. Oh, right. Okay, very nice. You managed to just get through the uh, hypnotic gaze as you look oh, into his eyes. Oh. He tries to transfer visions of times to come in a world of Titan, but you manage to resist and turn your eyes away from this, um, this horrible vision of the future. Um, but yeah, okay, it's Antigonus, it's your turn. <laughs> All right. Uh, first, let's get through these Myrmidon strikes. All right, go ahead. Six All of them, right. please. Six of, six of these. One. Fail, 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 uh, success. One, two, that's all, just one of them hit? Yeah, just one of them hit, yeah. So you need uh, 1d6 plus 4. 5 and then uh, roll 1d10. 7. Okay. Alright, so 12 damage. That's so bad. Those rolls are so bad. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then I will move away from my dragon flying. I'm still hovering. I'm not really flying up very high, but I'm hovering. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to go, yeah, 30 feet like there-ish. Alright. Okay, and then I will cast Immolation on this mofo. Alright, sure. Do you want to link spell so dc 18 uh, deck saves for him i don't know why it rolled it twice sorry the first one yeah, thought we should go right with. no worries um so dc 18 uh dexterity save there's a piece of failure so he takes nice. uh what's that um 41 it's 50 damage no 49 damage right am i right that yeah uh 49 damage yes all right nice, nice. uh uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, he only takes that extra forty-six on his next turn. Uh, yeah, on his uh, at the end of his turn, yeah. So just all right, so yeah. it'll all be there. We can go ahead and save it. Sure. Uh, and then I will. Uh, that's one more charge on my weapon. Okay, uh, that's right. my turn. All right, sure, Pruitt, it's your turn. Okay, yeah. Um, I imagine with that last seventy-five damage strike, he like oh, stabbed through the force cage and shattered it because that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that would flavor um, it that way, sure. Yeah, using so <laughs> I, I'm also remembering that uh, I still have Hermes winged boots, so Pro okay. will fly up. H- how tall is he off the ground level, of the floor? Um, Typhon. Yeah, uh, some what twenty-five feet. His that's okay. just his upper torso emerging from the mountain. Pruitt will fire, fry, uh, fly up 20 feet and okay. attack. All right, sure, go ahead. That's 23 to hit. All right, 23 is a hit, yeah? Yeah. There we go. All right. Forty-one magical piercing damage. Okay. Then for my bonus action, uh, I will use my class, uh, my unerring eye feature to make. I, I don't know what you would like to do, but either perception or investigation check as a bonus action um, okay. to see if there's any. I don't know. 
any useful information about the hole that he's in that I can pass? Yeah, on sure. Just roll it. I'll say perception. It's pretty, it's a bit too in the moment to do an investi full investigation. Uh, the class featured is investigation as a bonus action. But oh, right. Way. That's fair. That's fair. And you, you choose then. Then I will do investigation. So 29 on investigation. Yeah, sure. From what you can tell, the rubble sort of surrounds these snakes that are um, descending into the earth. Um, there, it, it just seems that they stretch very, very far down, these snakes, some as far as you can see into the darkness. Um, they seem to be keeping him aloft here. So do I get the feeling that we should target the snakes? That's your decision. I mean, all you're seeing is snakes going all the way down. Right. Yeah, okay. Okay. I should have okay. maybe drawn something to make this clear. I'll, I'm going to work on a diagram as we carry on. <laughs> so okay. uh, I'll just put it. No, not there. That's a bit in the way. Uh, but right. So, okay. Do I see a bottom of the hole? I don't. I'm going do to draw a diagram up here. So here we are in the mountain. Okay. Wow. Roll 20 is so laggy. <laughs> what? And that's not where I'm putting that. Okay. I'm going to do one here. No, nah, okay, that's, this doesn't work. I'm not seeing it. <laughs> it's not working anyway because Roll20 is rubbish at trying to get them on the place. So I want Do them. I see the bottom of the pit? No, or does it, it is just somewhat. Down? I, no, it's very, very far down. Okay, so I just shout out to everyone there's no bottom. We can't trip him. And that'll be my turn. All right, cool. Sure thing. Uh, all right, it's the Black Dragon's turn. He'll use his turn to try and break out of these bonds. So he's going to roll strength save 18. Does that beat your AC, uh, DC there? Um, Kara, 18? Yes, it does. All right, so he's freed himself and he will take off into the sky. Cannot use an action, though. Uh, so he flies up some 30 feet in the skies uh, and a bit closer to the flying people over here, but that will end his turn. It's Athena's turn, who will do as she is expected to do, I think, and go for two of the um, the old spear attacks with the multi-attack, which is both hits. But No, the, the second one actually doesn't hit, I don't think. Oh, no, it does. It just matches. There we go. So he takes a whopping 54 nice. damage from Athena. That's insane. So glad we resurrected that woman. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, which brings it round to um, his turn. Um, Aethon. On fire, right? Uh, yeah, let's roll a fire dex save. And I think he takes the faithful hand damage too. Aces his dex um, save. So. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to push him down, so... It, I'm just going to say it's impossible to push him down like that with a okay. spell like that, unfortunately. Yeah. You, he, you he, already, on his back. he already made his deck say he failed it. So that's, it, all right. that's the 14 so damage. That's already habit. All right, sure, absolutely. Uh, this is for the wall of fire, then 21 and the 22, I assume both succeed. So um, he takes nine damage from that, I think. Nice. Yep. All right, so he will use his turn. To do, 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 do a spell, which is a fun spell, and he's going to target on who will he target it on? Uh, maybe Antigonus. No, he'll go for Yarling. Mm. <laughs> All right, Yarling, he just points at you. You better not. <laughs> okay, and he doesn't, he changes his mind. Great. <laughs> <He'll>, um, <laughs> I cast suggestion, I just say, You better not. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he looks at you, Yarling, looks at you deep in the eyes, and he'll just say, You mortal, forget everything that you are in the wake of your extinction. And he'll cast a Feeble Mind, DC 23. No! Intelligence, what? is it? Uh, you see, it's, I think it's Charisma for this guy, actually. Um, let's take a look. Yeah, DC uh, 23 Charisma saving throw. I count the spell. Oh wait, hang on. Oh, you can count a spell. Yeah, well done. Oh, Indeed, what, you do. What level? What level is it? It's level feeble mind. I think it's what eight. is it? Eight. Yeah, level. level eight. I've still got a roll though. Yeah, against something. Right. But, but so. I am an abjuration wizard, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, just plus intelligence, though. That's all you'd add. No, I get to add my proficiency as well. DC no. equals ten. I'm an abjuration wizard. Level. All ah, right, okay. That's because that's the only for an abjuration wizard. That's like, that's just, that's not... Oh, okay. Uh, and I believe I also get advantage on it. Please do. <laughs> well, I roll one first. Well, that's natural twenty anyway. So okay, yeah, that will stop. That will stop his feeble mind from. Oh, I, I won't bother rolling again. Effectively, <laughs> darling. All right, that will end his turn. Whew. As he does not manage to get a feeble mind off. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look at him and just like, you shouldn't have done that. And I'm gonna open my jar. All right, sure. Um, can I trap him in my jar? No. Or is that, that's okay. that's fine. Just a flat no, sorry. That's, fine. that's, that's perfectly fine. Just wanted to ask. <laughs> Just thought I'd give it a try. All right, so... Um, it's a big I, jar. I need to roll this. So that's a 38, which I remember there being a difference. Out, out of 50, so it's 88. 88. So I have a... Night, I can't see what that is. Hold it's on. a night hag. A night hag. Yeah, sure. So okay. you bring a night hag into existence from this jar. Who knows from whence it came? This jar, nobody knows. But I'll put it on here. I don't know if that's even good or not. Uh, I have the stats if anybody needs them. So I'm going to give them to you now, Yarling. I'll just oh, give sweet. them to everybody. Are you going to give me the character sheet? Yeah, there you go. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Uh, and the night hag will roll her own initiative, I sleep. think. Sleep! It can cast sleep! That'll work! Yeah, it's gonna be difficult, <laughs> but you can try it. Uh, right, so this night hag will roll its own initiative, and it goes on a 16. Hey, it gets magic missile at will, though, so that's free damage. Yeah. Cool. Uh, which means you can use it straight away, if you want yelling, if you had a chance to look at its, uh, its, spell, its spells yet and stuff. Um, okay, uh... Either Raven, Feeble Mint, or Magic Missile, basically. Uh, Raven Feeblement, I'll do then. DC 14, uh, Charisma save, which I'm just going to tell you right now, I cannot fail. Yeah. Magic uh, Missile. Nat now with a nat one. <laughs> uh, with a nat one, I'm pretty sure he gets well he used that one. So. Uh, hey, did wait, he that's fail? not right. Why has that done that? He's got no. a plus seven to Charisma, he fucking failed. <laughs> no, he's got, um, it's, it's the sheet's fucking up. He's got, um, there we go. He's got plus 15 to Christmas save. Ah, I see. Okay. Which means that I've not been rolling this saves right the whole time through because I've never used a monster of this level in roll 20 before, but there you go. So <laughs> he's effectively been failing a lot of saves he would have succeeded, but oh well, no worries. We'll, uh, we'll just treat it as it's going for now. Uh, all right, so um, the Raven Fever, unfortunately, doesn't affect him. Um, it was it my action to open the jar. Yeah, it would have been, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fine. That'll be that'll be my turn. All right. And the night hag used the Raven Feeblement. Do you want to move her at all or it's like um, this this thing here is the night hag. Oh god, I uh What this this here? This thing here. Um okay, uh oh, sorry, so I'll I'll move her in front of me if I can. Like just yeah. just just here. Like there, uh, is that okay? Uh just like a further up. Just just so she's like in if he tries to look my way, she's in front of me. Kind of okay, thing. that may work, it may not. We'll soon see. Uh, all right, Kara, it's your turn. Okay, I am going to try casting Hold Person on him. Okay, you can certainly try. I'd recommend, if you want to take a quick glance at the spell description. You might want to, because it might not work. I'm not smart was, enough to know what you're. I'll, I'll just say right now, he's definitely not a humanoid. Okay, so yeah. never mind then. No worries. Um, Try something else, eh? <laughs> um, sorry, I guess I'll just throw another moonbeam at him. Okay, at what level? This time, I'm going to cast it at fourth level. Fourth level, okay, definitely. Uh, so, do you want to roll damage, and I'll have him roll his con save properly this time? Sure. Uh, he rolled a 36. <laughs> yeah, this is where those saves are meant to have been, but there you go. Uh, all right, so I'll put this here, this blue sort of square. Um, what damage did you get with that? I think it's 5d10 at your level now? Well, yeah, that's right. Um, 4d10. 4d10. So that is 9. 20, so 10 damage. 10 damage, okay. Wearing him down. All right, uh, Herodotus, it's your turn. Um, well, I was going to cast Polymorph, but I don't think that's going to work. Um, <laughs> I fly 60 foot, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20
Oh, well, that worked. <laughs> so what did you want to do? Uh, I was casting Disintegrate. But oh, right. So... Doesn't he take half damage still? I don't think they do. Uh... They've got... Really? Is it one of those all or nothing spells? Yeah, Disintegrate is all or nothing. Ah, right, there you go then. I didn't so. cast it at 8th level. I casted it at 7th, I think it was. What's uh, what the, level? Uh, what's the base one? 6th, I think. 6th level I cast it. I clicked on that. That's weird. Yeah, I casted it at 6th. So I'm assuming nothing happens at all. Yeah, I mean, effectively, you did cast it. Oh, no, you know, you've cast it at 8th level by accident. You're saying on the roll 20. Yeah, I clicked on all the 6th right. level one, so I don't know why it did that. All right, no worries. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, okay. it just zips right by him into the distance. This beam of negative energy just misses him entirely. That's a bit of a shit spell. No, you know, he's got a very high saves and 89 damage. It's an, it is effectively a risk you're taking to do huge yeah. damage. So. It does 90 damage. Yeah. All right. Um, is that in your turn? Uh, yes. Okay. Aethon, it's your turn. All right. As the, uh, the golden fleece starts to unfurl and lifts me uh, into the air along with all my other brethren, apparently, um, the shadows of the very pit from whence he came will start to wrap around and I'll cast Hex on Typhon. I okay. uh, give him disadvantage on charisma checks. All right. Oh, and... it's your hexblade hex, right? Don't you? Nope, just regular hex. Oh right. Um, <laughs> is he make a save then, or? Nope. No, so no save hex. Right. Yeah. So go ahead. Uh, and then as I'm rising up, I'll move like 21 feet up and like five feet this way. Okay. Um, and two strikes on the way up with the spear. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, they both definitely hit. Nice. <laughs> A 14 and a 16. Plus hex damage, right? Plus hex damage, yep. And I'll add, I'll add a, a level 2 Eldritch Smite on that as well. All right. Uh, so sorry, Harry. Is... My Bigby's hand will punch him on the head as well. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Um, I, hang on. So I'm just trying to keep track of your spells because you've got... Which I'm, you're concentrating on two, right? Yeah, I'm flying, which is one But you also cast Disintegrate. Which isn't a concentration. But, oh, right, yeah, fair enough, okay. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, Bigsby's hand is concentration, so it's flying. Right, okay, sure. So, uh, obviously, 17 force data. So, yeah, it's a difference. I don't like spells which are like eight paragraphs long, but there's, some of them have to be, of course. Um, but yeah, I'll have him take that 17 force damage for now then. Unless he has to make a save against it or anything, or... Um, surely it's not just... It's not compulsive damage, surely. Yeah, you have to roll to hit, so... Right, do you want to roll to hit something. then? Make a melee Let's... spell attack using... Assuming it's mine. Oh, no, God, yeah. that's probably a miss. I rolled a three plus 13, so 16. Yeah, that's a miss, unfortunately. Let's health back on. Oops. All right. So, um, Aethon. Yeah, you definitely hit him. You've gone with the these two smites as well. Yep. Is that right? So, that's four, 12, um, 28, uh, 32, 42 damage. It's very nice. Yep. All right. Um, so, he will do his legendary action straight on you, Aethon. He's just going to whip out with his tail at you. Very good. And serpent Lash uh, for 32. Certainly hits. All right, so he does uh, do twenty-eight damage. My right, my take... arcane shield will take that. All right, sure. So how much is left on your arcane shield? Seven. Seven. Okay. So it's He's on moving? you. Now. It's what? Sorry. Is Typhon moving? Is... No, I'm trying to get him out of the way to try and to select Athon's token on my oh. rotary <laughs> screen. Um, all right. So is that in your turn, Athon? Oh, sorry, I've got an extra eight back for that. Yeah, that'll end I my cast turn. cast Counterspell. Oh, right. Did you've count, you've used Counterspell before you used the shield, though, right? If I, I would have had less. I already lost some, so... I, oh, right, okay. Yeah. All right, so, uh, Antigonus, it's your turn. All right, the Myrmidons are going to try again. <laughs> the Myrmidons are coming. The Myrmidons are coming. Yeah. <laughs> okay, All one right. not 20. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so three hits. One of which is a crit. Nice. Uh, roll 1d6 plus 4. Okay, so then I roll that. You do have access to the stat sheet, you know. And roll that again. Yeah, it won't. It won't do, I tried to click on it. It doesn't do it. That's um, so weird. So, and then the third one was the crit. So that one is um, double to 10. And then I also will roll 
slash roll 2d10, and then that's 14 more fire damage, slash okay. roll. Okay. And then this one's the crit, 1d10. Uh, so that's 16 more fire damage on that one. All right, sure, sure, sure. So we've got 14, 19, uh, 27, 31, 41. Did, did you roll an extra d6 31. for the crit? I did I just Go doubled it. Do I that. just doubled the die. Oh, you just uh, doubled it. Okay. Yeah, okay. So then uh, I will cast... Um, I'm going to cast... Try to cast Banishment on the dragon. Okay. Is that uh, which uh, means that I'm gonna have to drop immolation, so that's not gonna not gonna keep burning him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and in my bonus action, I have to maintain my double concentration. Um, but banishment, I need a uh, charisma save from the dragon. All right. Um, Eleven. Yes. Nice. All right. So he's Ooh. banished back to Tartarus. Nice. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Very nice. Um, is that in your turn? That is my. Uh, I'm gonna fly up uh, thirty feet. That's it. I'm gonna go. All right. Up. Sure. All right. So uh, he will use his uh, legendary action to look at um, you, uh, Herodotus uh, Merlin, and uh, he's going to use him as another gaze. So it's a DC twenty three wisdom save, and he's going to use hypnotic gaze on you. I'm so old, I can't see him. So. <laughs> uh, so you, can, you can you can effectively turn away from him, but it means that you can't see him uh, to do anything that you do on your no, next I turn. I'm joking. Um, so what have I got to roll? Uh, DC twenty three wisdom saving throw. Which I get advantage on. Plus I get advantage on it anyway. But yeah, I just want so, advantage. There. So plus a eighteen and eleven. So that'd be twenty six. Twenty six. Wow. How much wisdom do you have? Saving plus throw. eight. A lot. Plus eight. eight, yeah. Bloody hell. All right, okay, cool. Uh, right, so that ends his uh, legendary action. It's your turn, Pruitt. Attack! <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang it. 15 to hit. Uh, 15 is not hit, unfortunately. Oh, no. I do get the bless, but I don't think that's going to get it up. Mm, won't uh, do it, unfortunately. 19 to yeah. hit, yeah. I forgot I'm blessed as well. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, sure well, thing. Uh, bonus action, insight, typhon, find his weakness. All right, sure. So he's rolling um, charisma. Mm-hmm. Is that charisma save, or it's just, it'll just be charisma? No, it's, it's deception check is what he has yeah. to do. He rolled a nine. <laughs> he's yeah. rolled so terrible so today. 22. What's his weakness, Harry? Give it to me. Uh, it seems to be his, I don't know, his pride. <laughs> he's, um, I will he's... attack him in his hubris then. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> got him. Um, so yeah, it's, I'll say this weakness. This seems to be infallible, an infallible, perfect being meant for destruction. I think I can kill that. <laughs> yeah. in my like, turn. trying to look for a weakness on him is like impossible. But, but I, apparently, I found one. So. Yes, somehow. <laughs> yeah, for the mechanical yep. purposes of it, you found a weakness. Yep. Um, but all right, is that I your turn? It. Yep. Okay. Uh, Athena will look to Typhon, see him getting weaker, and she'll shout out, saying, "Get ready to collapse it on him once he falls." And um, she'll take her turn to do a do, 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 attack with the spears. She misses both for the first time. All right, poor Athena. All right, so it's um, his turn now. And he's going to... Um, do, do, what can he do here? Let's take a look. He's probably nice. going to do another Minions of Tartarus. So summon a monster from Tartarus to assist him. Well of cold. Four. Okay. Which is uh, the swirling heads of a Hydra that appears. Mm. <laughs> fortunately for you guys. It's quite a strong one. Um, let me grab his token here. Come on, roll 20. Why? There you go. All right, so he's going to be summoned around there. Uh, and he'll roll initiative on the Hydra. 13, so it adds itself to turn over 13. All right. That ends his turn. Wall of cold. Uh, yeah, and it, unless Athena was flying as well, she's probably going to have to make a deck save as oh, well. Oh, yeah, maybe she needs well to actually. Yeah. So uh, let's see what she's got. She hasn't got oh, a great okay. deck save. She got a 16. Which is a and, fail for me. Okay, and Tython got a um, 
Dex save, right? So he got a 13. Wow, he rolled terribly. That's a nap. Three? Yeah. <laughs> He's rolling, he's failing every save, even with his super, super saves. Yeah, so they both take 28 cold damage. Okay, sure. He will use his legendary resistance to stop that, I think. Sounds good. Is that the first one? Yeah. Need to use nice. them. All right, so um, it is now your turn, yelling. As my action, can I give the night hag the potion of flying? Like, put it down her throat? Yeah, you can force it down her throat if you want. She's okay. your summoned being, so I'm going to assume she allows this to happen. Right. So. Um, and then I'm going to order her for her turn to fly above him and then use Phantasmal Killer to try and scare him into the hole. Uh, okay, sure. Definitely, you can try that. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very interesting uh, uh, attempt. So yeah, it comes around straight to her turn. So is, do you want to do a bonus action or anything? Or are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm going to give... Um, I don't think... Pruitt used the inspiration yet. Um, I have not. So I am going to give it to Herodotus Merlin. I've got inspiration already. I'm going to give it to Antigonus. <laughs> All right, sure. Bizarre. We'll give Antigonus. Man, I didn't remember that I had inspiration, yeah. otherwise I might have been able to hit. Something. Yeah, maybe. So the Nighthag's going to fly over him, if I understand this right. Yeah, and then and do try, and use, try and scare killer. him into the hole. <laughs> All right. Does she have Phantasmal Killer? Apparently she does. It's if it's in a coven. I think that's a coven spell. It just said for me. It just yeah, said... it's it's definitely a coven spell, unfortunately, which means that there needs to be three of them around to actually what cast. What can that. she do? She's useless. She's not, she's she's not very good. It's basically just magic missile spamming at this point. Yeah, you can roll a magic oh. missile if you want. Hey, at least magic missile always hits. Yeah, three so D four plus three. If you want to do a uh, magic I don't missile, even, I just I I I. Uh, she can do a magic missile. Uh, Go ahead, do a magic missile. I don't, have, have I don't even run away, want to. I'm just so mad right now. I'm just so angry. Feed her to the Hydra. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> feeling, I'm not even kidding. Screw it. Try She's and gonna, pacify I'm, the Hydra. You know with... Screw it. I'm just going to fly her over to the Hydra. Just, just go over there. Just okay. Go over. Just go over to the Hydra. Oh, oh. legendary oh, items. Oh, She's great. Oh. <laughs> is is she at least going cool. to magic missile a Mr. Typhon? Oh, uh, yeah. While well, she flies, if she can, just... Uh... 120 foot range. Oh, a stress. Okay, what is what? What even is a magic missile? Um, 3d4 plus 3. Go ahead and roll this for damage. Hits. Yeah, yeah it's hits, just automatic yeah. damage. It doesn't have to roll damage for an attack. Yay, 12. Oh. Yeah, 12. So he's Does down. it kill him? Yay. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if the night had killed Typhon? <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't. So, Kara, it's your turn. The whole time, Gowling's just like, you fucking... <sighs> I throw, can't... Throw oh. your magic item off the cliff. Oh. <laughs> just punt it. <laughs> Can I take back my potion of shop? Oh, I don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kara, what would you like to do? <laughs> he is, he's taking damage from your moonbeam currently, so he'll roll the con save. Yes. Which is, is the entanglement uh, still up there? Uh, no, I'm going to say no with a moonbeam active. Two, two concentration yeah, right, spells. Yeah, yeah. I have the um, concentrated mind, so I can maintain two um, concentration ah, yeah. That that perk that I so sillyly allowed. <laughs> that one, no. Concentrated mind is uh, is official. It's the one that yeah Lee it's has. That's not official. No, it's not. Yeah, concentrated mind. There's no concentrated means in the whole of D and D. Yeah, there's no I means in all of D and D to concentrate on two things. No, really? I thought yeah. that you had a different one, arcane focus or something. Lee. Okay, Both of them are unearthed arcana. They're not that was sure. another one. That was just stupid as well. <laughs> you know, so, I did uh, say, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No, no, I allowed it. I, I, I have to own that one. Uh, so what would you like to do, Kara? You, I, you roll the, do you want us to do your damage for your moonbeam? Yeah. Um, and with the dragon gone, Kara probably would have dropped that entangle anyway. Okay, so sure. No need to get fussed about it. <laughs> All right, I'm adding here. Um, 15 plus 9 is 24, 26. 27. All right. Um, 27. Halved, I think. It's 13. Yes. All right, so that brings it round to you, uh, Merlin, your turn. Unless you want to do a bonus action or anything, Kara. Uh, well, the moonbeam was just... Oh, that's just there, right? So you still got yeah. your action, yeah. Sorry, you got your action and your bonus action also. Yeah, so I'll actually throw another entangle up at the Hydra. <laughs> All right, sure. sure. So the Hydra is going to make a strength save of uh, 19. So I guess he gets out of that, right? 
Yeah, 17 All right. is the DC. All right, sure. Have you got a bonus action or? Uh, no, I'm good. All right. I like to think that these monsters are coming out of the ground and then Entangle is just the ground trying to push them back. <laughs> <laughs> Did um oh, right. did Pruitt find a weakness or was there not one? I did, yeah. He did, yeah. What, what but uh, it? it's it's very difficult. Only something only Pruitt would know. Yeah. <laughs> Effectively, I'll call it his belly button, maybe. No, no, it was it was the little red uh, dot in his eye. Ah, oh, right. Okay, there you go. The bull's <laughs> eye. So there, that's the weakness. Um. Okay, for my turn, I will fly to here. When I move him, I will fly to here. Okay. And then over the top of those guys, because this guy's huge, I will cast a lightning bolt at eighth level. All right, very nice. Jeez. Mm -mm -mm. For fifty-seven nice. damage, I need a dex yeah. save DC twenty. All right, uh, he is resistant to lightning. Any anyway, so yeah, uh, it doesn't is... matter because I've got. Um, a depth for elemental. Oh, you've got a depth lightning. Okay, sure. Nice. But still, still, he'll still roll his dex save. Um, let's see. Uh, dex, dex, dex. Come on, foul. So they got a oh, 25, nice. which I guess is a success. Yep. And the hydro it will fail, I'm sure, over the 19. <sighs> oh, just. Yeah. yeah. So the hydro takes 57 damage. Yep. And he takes, and he takes 20. 20. Yeah, he's looking, pretty, he's looking pretty rough. Yes. Python. Uh, but it's is that in your turn, Herodotus? Um, yes. All right. So oh no, no, it doesn't. Turn. It doesn't. Sorry. Um, Big B's forceful hand slaps him again. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, do you want to roll an attack? Yeah. Plus thirteen. Oh, nineteen. It's a mess, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Yeah. I use my inspiration. All right. Sure. Go ahead and roll. I don't. Uh... I don't. Oh, hang on. I've got bless. I, I just, I just yeah. remembered all this time my dog hasn't been doing damage to Typhoon. Yeah, I thought that was a thing. Um, so go ahead and roll. So I guess four D eight each 48. turn, but I can't remember how many turns. Retroactively, so I guess it's be two turns. So go ahead and um... eight D eight. Uh, Zach, yeah. what's a bless thing? Plus one D four. Thirty damage. Okay, which is enough Plus to knock four. Titan out for now. Oh. The little, little dog comes up and little runs up his uh, <laughs> runs up his body, and I guess drags his beard down to the ground, uh, and he is uh, for the time being unconscious. It would have been armor class twenty three, Harry. That was the hit anyway, but Typhon's already knocked out, so you can still hit him if you want to push him down with the with the big beast hand. Oh, if that's the case, they'll just push him down. Yeah. Yeah, sure. You can start pushing him down, but the hole's still open. Yeah. And Athena says, "Looks to you, and he said, collapse the hole, anyone." Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, all right, but it's the Hydra's turn, so uh, which was not affected by the um, by the what's it called uh, entangle. So it will go ahead and it will use its multi attack of five bites on the Night Hag, whose AC is tw uh, seventeen, so two hits <laughs> for thirteen. And these two are just having their own little fight in the corner. <laughs> Uh, and then he will, he's going to try and move past it. I'll just going to try and move past it. Does Five, she get an opportunity attack? Um, she'll get an opportunity attack, yeah. <laughs> if you really want to roll it. It's yeah, uh, a magic missile, hit. man. He can't use it, as unfortunately, as an opportunity attack. It, 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 uh, what, no, it's we're got to be claws, which is plus it's seven. It's got to be claws, yeah. So You've got access to her character, so you can roll claws if you want from there. Um, I can't roll using. I have to type it out. That's so strange. I'm not sure why that's happening. But okay, uh, go ahead and roll two d eight plus four. The ground where I cast that entangle would still be difficult terrain. All right, yeah, I'll put them like halfway back. So sure. Nice. Sixteen damage. All right, 16 damage going yeah. to town. All right, Aethon, it's your turn. As um, he's being slumped down and pushed down this hole, um, but even now you can see his body beginning to regain vigor. Collapse. Gotcha. I have nothing to mold the earth, uh, so what I will do is hold my attack action, should he resume consciousness. Okay, sure thing. Um, is that in your turn? It will, yeah. Alright, Antigonus, it's your turn. Uh, I will now go, now that I'm 30 feet in the air, we'll kind of move toward him over here, mm -hmm. and I want to try to look and see what is going on in that hole while he's unconscious. Uh, basically, it seems to just be sinking further and further down. At, this, okay. at, a, at a speed of about 10 feet per round. Not not very right. fast. Well, then I will cast Erupting Earth, and I, I already did it to his north side. Now I'm yeah. going to do it to his um, 
uh, uh, let's say, the, his west side. Um, All right, sure. Um, which is going to sort of, what's it going to churn up the earth kind of thing? Or? Yeah, erupt it. It cracks open. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, ground, the ground becomes difficult to train. Every five foot area of the square over the course of 20 feet cube on the east side of him collapses. All right, sure. Well, that'd be very effective. So his body sort of becomes half covered by a stone as he sinks down further and further. I don't know why he keeps doing everything twice, but uh, it's also 35 damage to anything oh, right, okay. uh, in that cube. I don't know if that matters. Um, and then bonus action, I'm keeping my concentrations up. And then the Myrmidons have their slashes, and they're just going to... I actually think that I'm just going to have them like jump on top of him and just start like... Sure. <laughs> Slamming him down and just trying yeah. to under- Effectively, all these are hitting because he can't really dodge at this moment. They can't really pierce this sort of immortality. But the ceiling of the earth, as it sort of surrounds him, he has struggled lifting this earth of Mount Etna from him. It is. It seems to be some sort of magic of blessing the actual um, dust of my, under the dirt of Mount Etna itself. That it makes it very difficult for Typhon to lift it up from above him. This is the trick. Seek him. Seek him. And that is my turn. All right, so it's your turn, Pruitt. Uh, does his body, is it like the same width all the way down or is it spread out? Um, it's hard to tell. He's filling the hole. So it's difficult to see past him. Ah, uh, okay. okay. I did not mean to cast that at fifth level, by the way. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I was already 20 feet up. I'll fly over him and start to push down. All right, what, with your actual body? Yep. <laughs> All right, fair enough. You're getting in the hole, and you're taking the, the idea of burying him literally. Uh, well, you know, it, over literally than everyone else. Yeah, fair enough. And you start to push him down just by jumping on him, I guess. <laughs> but okay, is that end of your turn? Uh, I will bonus action perception check to see if, or investigation check to see any other more expedient way to uh, to trap him. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, go ahead and roll. Uh, Twenty four. Yeah, you'll still notice that around here, the soil's very loose. If you start hitting the sides of the walls, probably will um, bury him a little bit. So I'll use the rest of my movement to go over to the side. <laughs> All right, sure thing. Okay. All right, so it's uh, Athena's turn. She's just going to start using a spear like a shovel and scraping dirt in doing <laughs> what she can, but she can't really do much. Um, basically trying to push dirt over him to bury him here. It's Typhon's turn. He's going to roll a 1d20, and if it's a 10+, plus, he's up. He is up with... A certain amount of HP, which I will not reveal to you. But that is his turn, effectively, to get back up and start trying to claw his way back out. So it's your turn. So as he rises, my held attacks go off. All right, sure. Go ahead and uh, roll those. Both our hits. Okay, very nice. 27 damage. And I'll do uh, Plus hex damage, right? Plus hex damage. And I'll do another... Mm -hmm. uh, Just do a level one smite on this one. Okay. So it's eight, four, twelve. Not quite enough to take him down. Still up, but still and still looking up with sort of a fury. Uh, Night Hag's turn. She's. What do you want her to do exactly? I want her to attack Typhon. Okay. With a uh, magic missile. Yes, yeah, screw it. All right, right go ahead and roll a three d four plus four. A uh, plus three, sorry. A ten brings him to not dead. Oh damn! <laughs> oh. Okay. Brings him to. Um, brings him to. A single digit number that rhyme that rhymes with um, Tom. Okay, um, I want to roll my doggo first if I can. All right, sure, you can roll doggo. Go ahead. That's forty-eight. Does it not have to hit to attack or anything? Just yeah. it's just constant it's damage. It's five feet. It just constantly does it. Oh right, okay, sure. So, um, so twenty-one yeah. damage. Is he down? He gets down. The doggo's done That's it again. The second time the dog down him. Yeah. <laughs> I was to cast feeble mind will it auto succeed because he's unconscious that's a good question um go ahead and try i'm gonna try and cast feeble mind our legendary resistance regardless so. but he's unconscious <laughs> i suppose he's unconscious. yeah that's fair enough okay um let's see I'll have him roll. Feeble mind do damage. I didn't it's that. A, yeah no this should be fair so you cast feeble mind at him you're unsure how it's affected him while he's unconscious oh okay <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna, uh, just she's just gonna the same speech she said to her. She's gonna repeat back and just look to the party and just go. He might be dumb now. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kara, it's your turn. 
Okay, how buried slash unburied does he look from where He looks I am? quite buried, like halfway down there. Seems to be trying to claw his way out, but he got knocked back down again. Okay, I am going to cast Wall of Stone. Oh, right, okay, very nice. cool. <laughs> Over him, like... Just flatwoods, flatways? Yeah, like horizontally <laughs> right. just like make that wall of stone and try to just like block him in. All right, sure, yeah. And I'll say that's probably enough to do it as he can't pierce through any kind of dust that is on him from Mount Etna unless someone else has dug him out like Zeus had. But he was still in Mount Etna as you guys digging him out and indeed you're buried him beneath and you can hear his uh, rumbling from the inside, his fists pounding against it. From the look of him when you saw him, he should have easily been able to make his way through this wall of stone. But it seems right now the magic is keeping them tamed. But Athena is still ladling, uh, ladling sort of... Um, sort of dirt and soil stone stones still on that wall that you've put there because that wall his... shall not last forever surely is a magic it's a magic wall and Dignus, where's your friend with the stone i uh, yeah that's a good, that's a good good question and at that point he shows up <laughs> so, uh, he can't the boulder get it just the hill. Falls down. yeah i was gonna say he like gets to the kept getting to the top and he kept falling down uh, yeah. <laughs> so here he is. What would you like him to do? I'll say it's his turn. So is it, sure is it over? Because obviously... Put the stone on his head. <laughs> yeah. Lock him in, Sisyphus. Sure. Place Sisyphus will come off. along and with his fabled boulder, he will place it at the top of Mount Etna on top <laughs> of Typhon, where it takes on a new meaning, the Sisyphean rock. Uh -huh. Here you have the allegiance of a man who killed his own son and served it to the gods. And then I think that it twice, actually. But still, he's your friend now, so that's what matters. <laughs> uh, what about this Hydra? The Hydra just disappears. No, it doesn't. Okay. I cast Disintegrate at 7th level on it. Okay, go ahead. If you want to get a Disintegrate out at 7th level, I will let you get a Disintegrate out at 7th level. <laughs> What's the save? 20. 20 um, dexterity, right? You're going to pass it anyway. Uh, let's see. Yes! yes! Uh, <laughs> I use the type. Uh, no, <laughs> legendary resistance. Uh, go ahead and roll. Um, if you really want to get you disintegrate out, go ahead. Ninety-four damage. <laughs> okay. Uh, it literally disintegrates the whole thing. Uh, it, there is a flash of light. It done it. At eight. The morphle started to cut off all its heads. It done it at eighth <laughs> level. I don't know why I did. It. Everyone, I clicked on it at seven. Get level. all the spells you want out of the way. As the Sisyphean rock just uh, burges what? out of the stone um, at the top, there is just a dome of stone, which is uh, the top of the boulder, which keeps ta keeps Typhon in place. Yeah, I tell the the Myrmidons to just keep shoveling with Athena. Every any loose dirt, anything that we can get on there. Oh, I'll um, I will land next to it. Drop fly, cast another big of his hand, and just like start digging him down. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> you can keep can, basically piling earth and earth yeah. upon this. Can this I hole. put my? Can I use Mordekainen's magnificent mansion and put it on top of him? <laughs> so, you can certainly do that. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna make this most beautiful mansion. Your, I'll use some more spell slots. And I wish Everyone it. I wish did, it was permanency yeah. spell. Get those spells that you've been saving out of your system. minor illusion to <laughs> have Typhon's hand come out from the... <laughs> uh, what are we doing here? What's this thing? There we go. That'll do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're, unfortunately, you're buried also, Aethon. So, so passes Aethon. <laughs> under this, <laughs> under this mansion. <laughs> All right, so that ends the combat for Typhon. So safely buried beneath Mount Etna once again, despite Zeus's in complete uh, certainty that he would um, end the world. Obviously, I underestimated the power of the party and the tools I'd given them. But there you go. That so passes Typhon. But if he was given time, perhaps he'd have conjured enough growing strength and resumed his full form and uh, wreaked havoc across the world. But it seems for now, he has been staved off and the age of gods has ended. If Only Athena and Hermes villages. remain. If we'd have saved those villages, he would have gotten stronger and we would have lost. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Management is pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah. this is the thing. Mm. Like, the problem I had then was um, I I think if I got to this point naturally in the session, I'd have learned what these spells done over time. <laughs> like, you know, as we, as we got them. But instead, everyone's like, every new, every turn is a new spell. And I'm like, oh, yeah. God. To be what fair, I think. <laughs> I think the people, the spellcasters that are here are learning it as well because I ain't yeah, got a clue. Sure. 
<laughs> I was like, that's, that's that sounds cool. Everybody that's probably has sounds. two concentration spells up too. So, yeah. Ooh, force cage. This sounds cool. Let's try. I, yeah. had, I had that as well. Everyone loves force cage. <laughs> <laughs> effectively pausing the game. <laughs> See what we can just do. hold on a minute, lads. Yeah, just whoa, whoa, whoa. Chill out. Hang on one second, please. Um, but yeah, definitely. You're buried Typhon beneath there. And Athena will. Um, <laughs> open a door from the mansion which she was yes. in <laughs> she, oh, yeah, no, was I, so I can she'll, i can she'll, she'll I open can, a window and yes. poke her head out saying Athena, we did i'm home <laughs> <laughs> we, we go inside the mansion and cook up a brew and uh, no, she will another out. great she will, co- she will come out and say you've done it you've defeated titan i wouldn't have thought it was possible but here we are i know it was rather easy Yes, surprisingly so. <laughs> <laughs> did, did anyone oh, actually it. get hit? Perhaps he would. Uh, perhaps he was grown, grown weak in his time in Tartarus. <laughs> <laughs> the knows? only time I got hit this whole day was when Pruitt aimed the dragon's mouth at me. <laughs> <laughs> I underestimated the power of the party. Fair enough. <laughs> Unbelievable. I did not aim it at you. Well, I, <laughs> you I think, it up at me. I think fair to say, I think, obviously, I've never played this level, this high level. Uh-huh. So I think, I don't know if anyone else has, but obviously I'm quite new to 5th edition. So and I I've don't not played you know. it on, um, with a uh, wizard before, which no. has obviously a lot of tools that I've, I know, like, I'm familiar with. I am going to do the, the most important thing. I'm going to uh-huh. run over to Modern Canaan's Faithful Hound that I summoned. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to give it the biggest pet and any rations i have are just being given to well, there's a big story. hydra there you can eat roll me an animal handling check <laughs> it eats you yeah <laughs> you here die. is herein is the real boss of the, <laughs> the new final boss yeah, yeah. Uh, Kynan's animal faithful hound. more than kynan's faithful typhon hound <laughs> yeah <laughs> nine nine yeah it bites you <laughs> but Togo, angry that friend. Typhon's dead. It's t- it's got the taste of blood from Typhon. Having killed him twice, the Doggo emerges on a quest of his own, <laughs> and end this world by his own means. Oh, Big Bigby's, uh, Bigby's oh. hand go up and pet it. <laughs> Bites that too. I don't know. Right, okay. Two of them. <laughs> sure. Um, it. Like, okay. With that, uh, Athena will escort you back down the steps of this. Uh, this um, mountain unless there's anything else people want to do up here that typhon's been buried um just as as far as i'm concerned that went faster than harry than hades would imagine so uh, (laughs) you've got uh i don't know at least a day just to get away Uh, i'll I'll tell him you uh you said that i'd I'd be fine yeah i'm I'm gonna try to convince him i'm gonna i'm gonna try okay good it's not great down there perhaps one day you come down and give me a hand you're you're so good with the boulder. I don't really know why you're having so much trouble getting it up the hill. It seems well, I can do it easy. It's just boring. <laughs> oh, Athena, okay. do yes? you have some contact with your brother at all? I I don't know what you gods and goddesses can do. Yeah, well, let me uh, let me try and reach out to him, and she'll um sort of close her eyes and sort of try and reach out telepathically, beyond beyond between the Olympian gods, and she'll say, yes, he's somewhere. Near India, he says. I cast. I, I want to uh, do an insight check because really, he's still looking for his fucking boots. He can't fly anywhere. Yeah, he can't. <laughs> <laughs> he, has more than, he has more than one pair. Of <laughs> yeah, as soon as You've as soon as oh, so she said in the fight, oh yeah, I have his boots. I was like. Oh no! Yeah, he, he, he walks in the end. <laughs> like, he has, He didn't fly anyway. He's he's, he's by, by this time. He's just made it down at Mount Olympus. <laughs> Her- <laughs> Herodotus, uh, a moment. Oh yes. Uh, Prout will point up at the mansion up on top of the mountain. Herodotus, I think the order of the soup has a new headquarters. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I can you know. want, this is a big spare. I can only do it once a day. <laughs> All right. Um, was was Harpy successful in? Not in finding Larkin, I'm afraid. But there is still hope. If you can petition Hades, perhaps he will return Larkin to you. But you have to. Enough. Yes. Speaking of gods and goddesses, I think with. Zeus and Typhon defeated. We may need to have a conversation about your roles going forward. 
Well, as I said, I am happy to forfeit my powers and give mortality a chance at ruling the world, but... We need to kill Hades first. Hades is a good man. There is no need to attack Hades. Oh, okay. I'd like to talk to <laughs> You're easy to convince. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> there needs to be, like, a, a an OVA of, of Yarlin trying to seduce Hades to get Larkin back. <laughs> Perhaps one day that can happen, yeah. What I'm going to do, though, for the sake of time, of course, is I'll hand it over to each player and give them a short, very short amount of time to just explain what they'll do in the wake of defeating Typhon in the wake of the New World without gods. Um where mortality is left to reign on its own. So go ahead. Whoever wants to start, go ahead. And perhaps give other people time. What would you do after this all ends? Big prompt. Mm. Yarling would probably set off back to her family, try and get the ones that were taken to India back. Okay. Um, uh, and she would keep in contact with Athena if she can to then contact uh, Hades um, she would try and convince and persuade Hades to um, give Larkin back um, okay roll me a persuasion check <laughs> I'd, I like to admit that they fell in love and had beautiful children <laughs> I'm not sure hey I'm pretty sure Hades is spoken for yeah I'm just saying I'm sure uh, <laughs> well that Stephanie... didn't stop any of the other Olympians yeah. <laughs> that's not that's true but Hades is different Hades you know Hades is actually very movie. very that's proud true. of his wife Persephone that's so. true that's true so, okay, Persuasion... Herodotus has watched too many films. <laughs> 30! 30. Okay, so it takes a long time, and it's many. It's perhaps a few years later this happens. Uh, but you make it down to the underworld once again with the help of Orpheus, who a friend you made on the travels at, uh, before time when you went to rescue Prometheus. And you entreated Hades to some music, his favourite pastime, his favourite hobby is listening to music. Uh, and you managed to... Um, Re reignite the love that Hades and Persephone had from long ago uh, purely with the sounds of your maracas. Nobody knew maracas could be used to such effect <laughs> but somehow you make beautiful music <laughs> comparable with that with Mozart or Bach just with the just with the clacking of maracas and it is it's magnificent. <laughs> As mere mortals describing it can only attribute petty words to the sounds that came from the maracas that day. <laughs> But God, the gods know it was the most miraculous sound that had ever emerged. Miraculous clap, clap, clap. sound. Oh, there we go. There we go. Miraculous <laughs> sound. But yeah, he indeed pulls the soul of Larkin from some deep, dark place. And um, he takes the body that you've provided to him. And he uh, effectively uses one of his once in a millennia abilities to restore single living soul to the world. And you have your sister Larkin back. Congratulations. Aww. Yeah, it's four years after her death, though. So by this attacked. time, I think um, she, you're even more her older sister. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I'll catch her up on everything that happened and go and keep on making the magnificent mansion for the family. Um, oh right, every day. I see. Every day. Um, mm -hmm. On top of that place. So after a year, it should have become my home. In, in, well, on on top of the mountain. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> right, okay. Oh so yeah! You have That's to spend right. a year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With uh, with Larkin's return, does that mean Kara and um, Antigonus get divorced? And <laughs> well, who knows? Right. Speaking of which, uh, so is there anything else Yalin would have done after she'd made this uh, um, this house on top of this mountain? She probably would have. Um, she she'd want to stay in contact with uh, everyone, and she'd probably treat her like tr try and stick with herodotus slash merlin um to help him out with what he needs help with but okay sure she'd, she'd be um she'd spend all of her time with the party just trying to you know do yeah i got you that kind of stuff um cool cool yeah. right well uh anybody else what what happened well, after herodotus after... will probably if she, as she mentioned herodotus well herodotus would probably open up I'd admit to the party that he is a protector of worlds and that he often visits, visits many planes and goes under goes by many names such as Gandalf, Palantir, Gandalf, please. Merlin. This was not, this was not okay. Dumbledore. Right. Oh, you told me what my, my ending was. Um, <laughs> Merlin. Uh, goes under by many names uh, on many different right. worlds and 
you know, now he's finished here. Neo, he goes Mad Max. <laughs> <laughs> there's actually there's actually a book that Homer says Simpson. Merlin is all these different people. <laughs> Please, Ricky Barack Gervais. Obama. Who knows? Yeah, Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> many different things. Many, many. Different. <laughs> um, no, but uh, yeah. So something, something along those lines. And that he goes no, and no, no, not along. No, those that's lines. my story. It's my story. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I will. Uh... But yeah, and no, he'll um, see out his days. And then... You've got important business to do. Athena will remind you. Yeah. Uh, given the goddess of wisdom, she understands your sacred task. You need to go to a certain place and be there for a certain boy who is destined to become the greatest king of all time, a king yeah. of mortal men. You need to be there when he comes to you, the young Pendragon. Yep. Yep. Did but you anyway, do that? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm assuming everyone would. Be, yeah, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm assuming everyone would probably be dead by that time. Or mind you, Kara might still be alive. Maybe that's true. Maybe everyone's dead by that time. Who knows? They may be petitioning. They may seek out ancient magics and keep themselves yeah. alive. But yeah, so yeah, you visit your fate and you visit the many different planes. But you know, your true loyalty, of course, lies in the Britannic Isles. Yeah. All right, sure. Who else would like to go next for this? What happened after Pantheon? Surely you got some stuff up your sleeve. If everything went well, where did you go? What did you do afterwards? Um, well, Athon, probably much like he came into the party, uh, would leave uh, quite alone after, uh, sending message back to Aspasia mm -hmm. uh, to let her know that uh, after all this uh, dealing with the gods and slaying many of them, uh, he would probably turn away from the teachings of Nyx. Um, and take truly to the to the seas and go help reestablish uh, where help was needed. I mean, there Zeus destroyed city after city. Um, certainly, there are people out there that need help. Uh, All right. Well, as you uh, come back to Aspasia successful in the final battle, you'll find that she survived your first attack upon Olympus by staying upon the trireme, the siren. She reveals to you her plans all along for, for you, um, for you, Athon. In that um, Caesarian, first series of Cyros, all the mages she asked you to kill were other candidates of Nyx's favor. And Nyx told them all that only one would receive her favor. And she was um, in the same magical capability as for, as for a series of Cyros, as Caesarian, the son of Julius Caesar and Cleopatra. Uh, but she needed someone to go around and kill them for her rather than getting her own fingers sticky. And um, you guys done that for her, and now she's Nix's chosen wizard on this uh, on this plane. She reveals this to you and you alone, Athon, and she keeps sending you on secret clandestine missions, which very slightly alter the course of history, but in a way that favors Aspasia and Aspasia alone. It's not long before Aspasia commands an extreme exceptional influence in Greece, um, spanning all the way to the Roman Empire, which still sees her as some sort of amazing queen. And um, without the interruption of the party, she will go on to become a almost deified queen in her own right, ascending to a form of godhood. Unless put down. <laughs> Yeah, Pruitt would oppose that politically. <laughs> All right, so perhaps Pruitt, you'd like to explain what happens out with you after this um, this um, emerging power in Greece by Aspasia's Greece. Okay, well, so before that, um, after the fight had kind of died down with Typhon and everybody's kind of recovering, mm -hmm. uh, Pruitt will pull Ath uh, Athena aside and ask her, Athena? I have a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you truly intend to give up your power if it means that mortality has a chance you do not need to convince me that the gods have squandered the responsibility given to them mm. and you can give it to someone no mm. yeah, perhaps not I but I know somebody who can but they must be worthy I would not give my power to somebody so reckless perhaps but who did you have in mind me <laughs> you. that is very cute for it but if i gave you the powers who's to say you would not run rampage across the world and turn the world entirely to rome you are the goddess of planning in battle and honorable combat if you do not know me to be worthy of this power then you are not the goddess you claim to be 
you're having a very difficult concept of persuading me how to do this, yes. I'm also the goddess of wisdom, and my wisdom tells me that the only purpose of me giving up the power is to make sure it's not used in a bad way, and here you come to me asking for this power alone. I, I could not possibly give it to one person and have one god in this world. There would not only be one god, there's still Hades, there's still Hermes. Mm. I wish to keep them in check, and I have experienced mortality, and you have not. That well, makes me different. <clears throat> I'm afraid for it. The answer is just no. I cannot give you immortality. But yet you said there was someone who could. You could entreat with the other gods. Perhaps go to Tartarus yourself and seek out Oranos. He gave us the powers. Perhaps he can give you them too. And then I will do this. Very I well. It will. <laughs> Are you going to travel to Tartarus to try and entreat with Oranos for the power of a god? <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> That's a very difficult, difficult journey down to Tartarus. You've and been there once. Still before. there today. <laughs> yeah, it's a ve- especially unless anyone's coming with you. Um, exceptionally hard. And uh, given, I'm not sure if anyone would go with you. I'm not, is anyone I, would? Want- I'm not, not going Yaling- to ask. Well, if Yalling's going down to Hades anyway, then yeah, Yalling would be <laughs> open to become a goddess. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure. Um. um and after, like, if if this is after succeeding in getting Larkin back, she'd probably happily accompany Pruitt in this endeavor. All right. So three of you can go down in there. I'll have Pruitt roll me a persuasion. Yarling roll me a persuasion as well. I'd, I'd be in a, uh, like, a pond at this point, like, swimming away from a pike. Okay, sure. Simple <laughs> pleasures, definitely. Uh, all right, yeah, like sword in the stone. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, I see. Okay, yeah, <laughs> the, the fish sequence. Sure, sure. Um, a 21, I'm gonna say it's probably not good enough to convince uh, the father of the Sky Father, the first being out of um, chaos, to give you the powers of a god. <clears throat> Just simply hand them over to you, unfortunately. But Pro, what did you for Pro it as well, 13. 13, yeah. It's an exceptionally high DC role to say, can I become a god? But mm. he does reveal to you some secrets of the uh, the gods that you may find interesting. Locations of certain artifacts and things that could provide you some semblance of immortality, but not the powers of a god. Yeah. Just the escape of aging, the escape of um, the escape of death. Harry, someone's mm. asking what the fate of Asclepius is. The face of Asclepius, that's a good point. Asclepius was one of the first gods to fall to Zeus's uh, murderous rampage of his own kin when he suggested that the um, they could all sort it out with just a twerking contest, which was his favorite favorite pastime. Oh, I, he tried to hide, didn't he? That's but he what was... I said. <laughs> tried to hide? Is that what you said? What you got yeah, well, but he was dummy, you know. <laughs> ah, yeah, of course. The fate of Asclepius, of course. <laughs> He tried to hide away from Zeus for the clapping of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Revealed him hiding behind a chair on Mount Olympus. Where he met the same fate as many other gods, unfortunately. Pruitt. There you yeah. go. That's what happens to us, Clapius. Pruitt, shall we? Yes, yelling. you can go on a small quest to find these objects if you wish that may give you the powers of a god without actually being the god effectively using the items to be the semblance of a god hand Mm. extended yeah so Pruitt and Yaling will find these items and Pruitt will basically become an old sage wandering the earth and giving advice to those who fight honorably sure sure absolutely very cool Yelling, what do you do with your newfound power? Uh, She'd probably become a... A cult leader. Yeah, good question. She'd (laughs) probably become like a... Some kind of uh, ruler. um, Okay. Somewhere behind the shadows. Like, not actually up front. Um, So you want to become a new Aspasia, sort of? Kind of thing, yeah. Okay, Um, that's very cool. Kind of behind the scenes. um, And I think she'd be uh, a campaigner for like women basically oh i see strong female figure like that rules behind the scenes behind 
like a man but like see, is really in charge of everything yeah absolutely sure so you embody the idea of the um the uh hetaira in yeah the, really you um you rule from the shadows in the way of a man so and um like permanent the... mansion on the hill is now run by the family okay sure <laughs> the mansion at mount etna under which there is still the trapped um typhon <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, Antigonus or Kara, is there anything you two wish to do have done or? I'll let Kara go first because I'm still thinking about something and trying to figure out. <laughs> All right. It. Kara, uh, when all's said and done, you know that by now you've traveled to Britannia and you've made your islands, you've made your isles safe. Yeah, Kara would have liked to try to rebuild, help the people rebuild the towns that Zeus destroyed. And all of that, just kind of try to help bring some balance back into the world. Yeah, absolutely. You make your way from town to town using your druidic abilities to regrow farms, to provide food to those who have no other way of getting it, and even to help build using your hands you, and embracing the more world side of things as well as the magical, what you can do to help. You bring water, you bring great fortune upon fields, and you're, you yourself become to be known as not a god, but you, the, your, your appearance or the idea that you may appear um, is a great sign, a good, great, good omen for people. And even to this day, people still say this field could use a good Kara. Or you know, I wish Kara, I wish Kara would come and visit. You become effectively like the Father Christmas for fathers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they just wish Kara would come. You know, where, where is Kara? And um, yeah, so you get a sort of not a cult following. No one expects you to be a god. You're more just a sort of a luminary figure of history that may or may not have existed. This fabled druid that went away repairing the world. Come by, Kara, my lord. Come by, Kara. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So I think Antigonus would have stuck with Kara for quite some time um, as they did these tasks to better the world, especially Britannia. Um, but, you know, being a creation of Epimetheus, uh, as I learned, he's he doesn't seem to age nearly as fast as anyone else does. His, his, okay. His Kara would age you know, even with her elvish roots, uh, still a little bit faster than he ages. And eventually he finds himself alone and not really knowing what to do. And so I think he becomes um, pretty obsessed with trying to make sure all these new religions and new cropping ups of ideas don't start to take flame. Okay, uh, sure. <laughs> so he finds he finds some some people and he starts with a with a young guy named... Uh, uh, Pontius Pilate? Uh, he starts with a young guy <laughs> named Michelangelo, actually. And, all right, okay. Through astral projection and becoming sort of an astral figure, he teaches Michelangelo how to sculpt. Uh, and then over the course of time, <laughs> okay, right. so, finds, yeah. So, are oh, you just everyone? Does, <laughs> yeah. Anyone who's well, anything I'm not, good? I'm not everyone, but I inspire. <laughs> I become sort of a muse. Sure, sure. And I'm a muse specifically for humanists. And so there are these figures throughout time that, you know, catch this glimpse of inspiration, something that makes the, the human imagination more important than any any uh, religious belief or any okay. other barriers that between people. All There's right. A flicker of a grumbly, you know, green flame and a voice that says, you know, you, you are the gods and people like Shakespeare and the other humanists of the time. And Camus, Camus gets a really good story about Sisyphus in his ear. And Da Vinci. Okay. Uh, uh, da Vinci. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sure. Whisper, sure. And then I let them go. They do their own stuff. But I, just I wonder, go. roll me a, um, Persuade, not persuasion. Um, let's just roll me a look roll. Roll me a 1d20. Oh, dear Lord. Inspiration, the one I haven't used okay. in years. <laughs> Go ahead and roll inspiration on it. All right. 17, okay. <laughs> Three of the 20 people you inspire throughout history turn out to be extreme fiends because you oh, give them the no. wrong idea. Uh, so here okay. we're looking at people like uh, Rasputin, perhaps... Uh, who else have we got? Um, Nietzsche. Nietzsche did the wrong things. They just took it too No, far. no, worse than Nietzsche. I mean, these <laughs> people to be actually responsible for deaths, of course. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll say maybe Columbus. <laughs> he okay. went, yeah, he yeah, was, yeah. You gave him the inspiration to go to America, and then you just let him do whatever he wanted there. So, yeah. Um, Oops. That yeah, who else could we do? Um, I'm not going to say Hitler. <laughs> that's a bit a lot on Antigone. No, I don't want to do that one. Yeah, uh, sure. I'll say um, Karl Marx. No, I'll, I'll say what happened is <laughs> maybe uh, Antigonus was responsible for apartheid at some point. 
Oh, no. <laughs> this is the, that was the worst mistake you ever made. Yeah, that's the worst mistake I ever made. Yeah, and it was not you making that decision. It was just interpreted wrong. Just so, Hamilton yeah. cheating on his wife. That's where <laughs> that was the other one. <laughs> Grindy yeah. said the man that created pi uh, pineapple on pizza. Uh, ah, yeah, that could yeah. be you. Yeah, you were responsible. That was one of your ideas, Antigonus. Mistakes were made. Was, yeah. It seems so good. Yeah. And yet so bad. Uh, yeah. Indeed. Anyway, that's kind a of what a few I would missteps do. in Antigonus. But yeah, everybody out there, in the eyes of the humanists. With uh, when you look at a painting from now on of an ancient era, a Renaissance painting of lots of luminaries gathered together, just squint your eyes and look in the background, and perhaps you'll see a green face of an orc giving whispering words of wisdom into these ears, uh, these uh, luminaries, these uh, humanists' ears. Because you'll definitely see him there. Whispers of this man who's been throughout history, um, giving you know inspiration to all these. Uh, fantastic scientists uh, and um, philosophers and things. So, yeah, that's how Antigonus spends his time. I suppose, Antigonus, um, apparently you lived a, lot, a long, long time, huh? I think he just became basically an astral, part of the astral plane at some point. All oh, right, a god, maybe, or like... Well, not really uh, a god, just like a, you know... <laughs> I'm always saying, because it's like the way you say it, it's like, I just figured that I'd become like an astral entity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, okay, yeah, sure. yeah. All right. I liked how Kara's uh, intuition was to help people, and yours is like, oh, I'll just be the best guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever I can be. But cool, yeah. All right. Therefore, now we've got everybody, the conclusion to everybody's story. I didn't miss anyone, did I? That would be extremely embarrassing. Pretty that's sure everyone. Nope, that's it. Cool. That's it. That's it for Pantheon. So thanks for stopping and watching Pantheon. Um, a very sort of. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on in there. I'm still, still processing all the things people are doing in the back after the story. But yeah, I'm glad. I hope everyone enjoyed it uh, for while it lasted. What did Larkin get up to? <laughs> like to uh, imagine like a little like. Uh... Upon being resurrected, Larkin tripped and uh, scraped her foot on a stone <laughs> and died of tetanus two days yeah. later. <laughs> I like to imagine her yeah. and Yarling like if they both achieved the immortality, but not the god power thing. Mm -hmm. I like to think they through history just helped um with um you know a lot of like really cool stuff so like put in the chat just like helping the suffragettes and stuff like that just, all like, right okay all, all that kind of stuff they're just sure. like in the background and managed to kind of mimic their way through um maybe they also even, started like, several hag covens yeah precisely <laughs> as, to, well as, as well as the so. first pole dancers in managed there. to <laughs> manipulate a few men with their yuan t ways yeah. and I see, um, I see. they actually the reason people believe in lizard folk because they caught a glimpse of yowling and ah, that's interesting yeah and then one day some guy started writing uh D, D and he thought i'll make a lizard folk after the yeah. yowling and then made the yawn. Oh no, I meant I meant the conspiracy theory. <laughs> oh right, conspiracy theory lizard folk. Yeah, sure. And they're not wrong in this case. Lizard, yeah. lizard people run the U.S. government, and they're entirely right. They want to be become <laughs> Hillary Clinton. And just, <laughs> like a lizard in disguise. Pro becomes Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Pro, Pro becomes Hillary Clinton. Okay, sure. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. The yeah. Foreign presidential clothing. But we already know that's <laughs> Pro Trump was. So you know. <laughs> that's true yeah, that blonde that's blonde full head of hair so yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> all right cool oh, he went well, crazy with power yeah and yeah, i gave you too many tools to take down typhon so he went down <laughs> like a ton of bricks that are my my big boy but there you go yeah. but yeah i hope everyone enjoyed it i hope everyone had a good time um and hopefully one day uh we'll see a bit more of like some one shots of pantheon and stuff i'm sure i've been, I've been interested in but yeah do check out the law um law for stupid discord if you want to get involved in our one shots and things so yeah definitely and obviously we've got party foul tomorrow mm -hmm. um hopefully some um tiefling tots next week yeah uh, was so that if a week anybody after? saw tiefling tots last time the premise is you got six tiefling babies in an orphanage in a human orphanage and it was really fun last time we're doing a sequel next week at the pantheon time is it slot. is it next so week if i know or is it a week after um, it's at we're getting that down, but yep. plan on next week. <laughs> yeah, if it isn't Tiefling Tots, then it'll be a one shot of some sort. We'll get someone to run something. Um, uh, definitely. So we'll definitely be live next uh, Friday. And yeah, um, we've got Eden launching soon as well. When when's that, Amy? 
Uh, beginning of September. Beginning of September. Uh, not the first week, yeah, maybe not... the second week is, it's... I think, mm. the it's estimated not... start. But yeah. Not but... next Monday, but potentially the Monday after. Ninth, yeah. ninth of next month, that's just been confirmed. So another one we're looking forward to. So we've got lots coming up. We've got more shows coming up <clears> after that as well, later on. With one from our fabulous Tiss, and then we've got Tamshu running a vampire game eventually. Um, there's a date set for that, but we're not releasing the dates and that yet for them. But um, yeah, thank you very much, guys. Um, thank you very much for watching this last one. Um, I'm sure I speak for the rest of the players. Harry, been awesome on this Pantheon. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I'm and I'm gutted to see it end. But yeah. Um, I nearly cried. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you very much, guys. And yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. See you later, everybody. See you later. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye.